It's literally the definition of beating a dead horse. And let's be honest, Vosh himself knows a thing or two about that, am I right? Stop watching content you like watching. That is a literal like five head take. Watching videos of frogs getting burnt in lava. <laughs> oh my God, it's so embarrassing. I get the feeling we're about to be lectured how white supremacy is bad. When's that bad faith person gonna come in? Because I, I, I don't know, this seems a bit disingenuous, but I do feel like he's just using Xanderhal as a bit of a punching bag. Not them personally, but in the space. Yet another video about debate bros are bad. And uh, yeah, it just... Like, <laughs> we'll watch some of it. I don't know if I'll watch all of it. We'll watch some of it, at least. You know, we might watch all of it. We'll see. We'll see how much i got to say about it. Um, But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like, I just, I'm just kind of like, look, you know me, I'm all about talking about how things are content and what this space really is, which is an attention economy and all the stuff I normally talk about, okay? Um, and I just think that debate bro, video essay, it's all just content for the machine at the end of the day. Now, can there be people that change their views or minds on things based on watching a debate or based on watching like a essay? Like, sure. Like, that could form part of like some element of education or something like that. Yeah, yeah, sure. That I don't I don't think that's that's that controversial. Um but I just I just feel like there's this constant like pressure or like criticism from like the video essayists where it's like debate bros bad, debate bros bad, debate bros bad, stop watching debate bros, stop watching debate bros, stop watching debate bros. And there's a couple of things with it. So the first thing is I don't really think there's the same pressure from the other side. I don't think the bait bros or whatever are sat there going, oh, video essays should stop doing video essays, stop watching video essays. So it just seems a bit weird to go on this kind of like crusade as some people do about it. Um, and also like stop watching content you like watching. That is a literal like five head take. That's a literal five head take. Like, you know. Imagine if there was something that you enjoyed watching and then some and then some nerd came along and was like, actually, that's problematic. Can you stop watching it, please? You're not going to be like, oh, yeah, OK, I'll, I'll stop watching it then. Sorry. You're going to be like, no, I like watching it. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> yeah, that thing you enjoy is bad. Stop immediately. And this is a this is what I see. Like the problem you've got is like there's something there's something going on there, clearly. There's something going on there clearly where people enjoy watching that type of content. They enjoy the contention. What it is, okay, listen, you want to know the truth? Why do people watch soap operas or, or reality TV? Why do people watch soap operas or reality TV? Like, because there's contention, because there's drama, because there's spice, yeah? Basically, debate bro culture and Twitch cult drama is, is basically like Jersey Shore for, for young male Zoomers, on the whole, okay? Like, obviously, there's women that watch it too and other people that watch it too. But I'm just saying, like, that somehow the market has found a way to create content that appeals in the same way that Jersey Shore is like red meat, is like red meat to, like, some women. <clears throat> this is red meat to young male Zoomers on the whole, okay? Don't call me out like this. Listen! I'm one of the people that I'm talking about. I'm not a Zoomer, I'm a millennial, but I love it. I love all the drama and the spice, okay? Um, I like video essays too. You know, I poke a bit of fun at them sometimes when they're a bit pompous and stuff. But yeah, I watch like video essays. Um, what was the last one I watched? No, this is going to be embarrassing. <laughs> this is going to be very embarrassing, isn't it? What did I watch last? Oh, well, yeah, I watched um, most of Jay's video, probably about 50%, about React content. You know, for some reason, I was watching Fern Gully clips. That's a bit random, but I don't know. It is what it is. Fern Gully for some reason. Um, I've been watching some of Mr. Girl's video essays. Watching videos of frogs getting burnt in lava. Not sure where that came from. Oh, I know where that came from. I, wa I wanted to watch that video of the live, live frog. Uh, something crossed my mind and I was like, oh, what was that video about where a frog gets eaten? And I was watching it. I was like, oh, that's a bit weird. And then it came up with all these recommended videos and it was like putting a frog in lava and stuff like that. So that was a bit strange.
I think video essays are, are fine. Like they can be interesting to watch. But like the stuff, like people act like debate bro culture or whatever is somehow uniquely bad or stuff like that. But like you can have the same problems with with other types of content too. It's so weird to me. Anyway, so Noah released this video and obviously everyone kicked off and was like, oh, they've done a video about debate bros, da 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 da. So let's watch a bit of this and see what the deal is and we'll go from there, okay? Noah Samson's a fucking idiot. Noah, the, the coward Noah Samson, who said that he liked me in a video and then later posted like a minute long retraction in the following video. Coward, I have coward, no problem coward, with black creators coward. getting really big. God, I, oh my God. I really hate these kind of like snarky memes. I'm just, I'm so sick of them. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm so done with them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just a bit cringe, you know? We get it. We get the snark posting, okay? I've seen it before. <laughs> However, FD signifier is a dumb fuck. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Hassan Piker is an idiot. Nobody learns anything new from Hassan. Oh. I don't believe oh, that Hassan is capable of defending socialism as a concept. Oh. I don't think he understands it enough to, <laughs> to defend it as a concept. Bro. Fuck you, FD signifier. By fuck the way, you know Noah Sampson, massive defended Hassan as a concept. simp. Bro. Massive Hassan simp. Massive Hassan simp, okay? Part of the Hassan Orbiter Industrial Complex, okay? He's got, like, a reference to him here, and he's, like, been like, oh, thank you for watching my video on stream, Hassan. Appreciate that. But he's got a link to one of his videos down here somewhere. Hassan on Debate Bros. Video sources, so that probably comes up at some point. Another thing as well I want to show you, okay? <laughs> I see everything, okay? I see everything, you know that FD signifier person? Yeah? Who's made a, made a video about bread too bad or whatever. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, 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 interesting. <laughs> they all want a bit of the old Hassan clout. They all want a bit of that Hassan clout. God, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad, really. Anyway, it gets even more sad when you see this. It gets even more sad when you see this. This this made me wince a bit from cringe. Okay? Look. So we've gone from, yo, Hassan, hit me up. Let's have a chat. To this. To this. Um, are you going to collab with FD Signifier? I think he wants to talk about debate bros, and I don't want to talk about debate bros. Ooh. If we're being honest. Ooh. And I don't want to watch Noah's video on Debate Bros because oh. I don't I don't care about Debate Bros. And then he just responded. <laughs> oh my god, it's so embarrassing. Yeah, he is. It's actually a relief. <laughs> oh my god, how cringe. How cringe. I'm adopting that energy going forward. Oh dear. You FD signifier. Fuck you, Noah Samson. Fuck you, Hassan Piker. Go fuck yourself. Don't be proud that you can't defend your ideas in a debate. Don't proudly exclaim to the online right and everybody watching that the left isn't and shouldn't defend their ideas. I'm sure that Noah Samson will just end up putting out another video about how debate bros are awful. And uh, with the bisexual lighting and the and everything like that. Hi everyone, welcome back to this television show. I'm Noah Sampson, your host on google.com forward slash youtube.com's best website, my channel. If you've got something that's gross or a little bit weird near you, like a garbage bag full of animal parts or something, get it out of there. Take out the trash. That's my number one health foods tip of the day for today's day. Warning, warning, alert, alert, red alert, alert. Alert, this is not an anti-debate bro video. This video is, and I hope we can improve our online conduct and get better at recognizing white supremacist structures in leftist communities. Okay. All right, well, it's one of those. Yep, it's one of those. <laughs> it's one of these ones, okay? I get the feeling we're about to be lectured. I get the feeling we're about to be lectured how white supremacy is bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I 
I don't know. I just, yeah, I just, my eyes kind of glaze over on this. To be fair, he's not saying they're white supremacist. He's talking about like, I, 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 you know, I guarantee you this is probably going to be one of those things where he makes some salient points about incentive structures and the way society is structured and stuff like that. But he just individualizes it and complains about like Vosh bad or some shit. I don't know. I just, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I just, look, these people just, they're so, I just hate the inconsistency of it, you know? I hate the inconsistency of it. The fact that they're like so willing to call out. You know, it's like, look, Vosh, is, Vosh at this stage is just like, it's easy meat for woke, for wokies, for wokeoids. It's easy meat because he's got a very bad reputation. Um, you know, it does do some stuff, which is the yikes or whatever. <clears throat> you know, it's like the definition of beating a dead horse. Oh, my God. That literally just came to me out of nowhere. I didn't even make the connection until I started saying it. Wow. Amazing. What a great meme. <laughs> it's literally the definition of beating a dead horse. And let's be honest, Vosh himself knows a thing or two about that. Am I right? <laughs> there we go, folks. The memes are flowing. The memes are flowing already. Anyway, let's continue, okay? <laughs> Video. Just... Oh, no! Wait, we're back, we're back. No disconnect, no disconnect to Renio. No disconnect to Renio. We're back, we're back, we're back. So happens that in order to do this, we need to use a couple of debate bros as our Caucasian punching bags. But they won't mind. As a matter of fact, they like it. They love it even. They love it when this happens to them, and we love to see it. This video is sponsored by White on White Crime. I'm here to correct the record on some falsehoods that are being spread around oh the D-boy zone, and also expand on my own personal criticisms of these spaces. I personally, and you can shit on the top of my head for saying this, but I personally think that people like Vosh have the ability to do a lot of good with their platforms. Teaching young people how to use arguments and rhetoric okay, to push back good. against their 9 o'clock bedtimes for reasons not unrelated to gaming. Spreading socialism with discord characteristics across the globe. No, but seriously, I do appreciate what he and other members of the live streaming community do. It's a different skill set that's uh, important to have, and denigrating this community from the outside is uh, the last thing that I want to do. That being said, there are some clear problems with the way that debate spaces operate that will only continue to arise until they are properly addressed, so that's why I'm here. I can fix them. Obviously, that's not going to happen, but you know what they say, shoot for the moon, and when the bullet travels back to Earth, you'll kill a teenager in a nearby town. I've brought a friend along with me for today's video. Why don't you come on out, buddy? Whoa, hey, everybody. It's Who is, what's this? Good Faith Gary. You dislike Vosh because of a debate, bro. Because he's a debate, bro. I dislike Vosh because of his gloves. We are not the same. Oh, okay. I feel like he's poisoned the well a bit. <laughs> I've got no idea why Xander Hall was so angry with all those people he was angry about. <laughs> but he's kind of gone in like super heavy on Xander Hall. I honestly feel a bit bad for Xander Hall. Like, I feel like Xander Hall gets, like, a complete metric ton of shit thrown upon him. And, like, you know, not, not to patronise or anything, but, like, he's, he's like a young lad. Do you know what I mean? How old is he now? 21, 22? Like, and he gets so much shit from everyone. Like, I don't know, it just feels a bit wrong sometimes. Like, it feels like he gets so much shit from every angle. Yeah, of course. I, I, you know, I'm set, you, you know, Noah's got a right to respond because Zan's talk shit about him, right? But I'm not saying that's a problem. But I'm just saying, like, Zandal gets a lot of attention, uh, and I think some of it's a bit excessive. I think some of the things people say about him are extreme. I'm a Zan fan and I agree. He gets so much shit. And even if I think he went too far with his fuck you all joker moments, he made some good points. I mean, listen, I'm sure Xander Hall... Zand, listen, I've... I've um, <laughs> I've done, made some content with Xander Hall. I've watched Xander Hall for like a little while. And uh, Xander Hall does have his joker moments from time to time, okay? But I just... Yeah, I think in terms of like what he does, the response is excessive. Right? That's that's the point I'm trying to make. I, I you know who thinks here that the response to Xander Hall is le legitimate and fair based on his stuff. I don't know. 
It's been known to happen. Listen, satanic meatball, come on. You think everyone's a lib. I think everyone's a lib. Sometimes you just have to let the joker out of the cage. We're all functionally liberal, don't forget that. Well, listen, if you're not his target audience, that's fine. But, um, yeah, I think there's a difference between not, not enjoying his content and, like, people just endlessly shitting on him. It was really bad, like... And look, you know, he did some things which were stupid, like, no doubt about it. Like, he would, like, name search himself on Twitter and just randomly quote tweet people, which probably isn't conducive to, like, a good social media experience. Um, but, yeah, he definitely got attacked from, like, a lot of different angles. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, let's continue. It's me, Good Faith Gary. This is Good Faith Gary. Everyone say hello. Howdy, y'all. No, not you. I'm telling them to say hello to you. Oh, my bad. Wait, Gary, aren't you just Clippy from the Windows thing? I don't know who that is. I'm pretty sure you are, like that animated Microsoft. My name's Gary, so it's on my birth certificate. Okay, well, I've brought Good Faith Gary in to help us out by stepping in if I ever start acting in what debate streamers might deem bad faith. I'm going to be looking out for any uncharitable, straw man, poisoning of the well style situations. Hopefully this will help keep the dialogue open, because honestly, I don't trust myself enough to not be a dick to viewers of debate streamers, even though I used to be one of them. Yeah, you've been on leftist Twitter for a little too long, huh? Right. I'm Good Faith Gary. What's this? What's going on in chat? I noticed someone talk about full time. He saw Vosh get rich and thought it would be easy. <laughs> Listen, I don't, I don't think that. Um, so, and then there's this reply here. I suspect that's why we see so many people call themselves content creators and join these platforms to begin with. A lot of people stream full time, with like fifty concurrent viewers and don't even have a regular job. I mean, some people are like um, trying to live the dream. You know, that was me for a little while, trying to live the dream. And I did it. I look at where I am now. We're loving life. Chud, Chud Nation is now a legitimate business entity. Okay? We're laughing. What's Noah's main job? What's this? Hello, everyone. Welcome to a high... Who's this? Who's this person? Noel Miller. Are most people on Twitch streaming to less than 10 people? There's a lot of people. Listen, normally talk content guy. There's a lot There's a lot of people out there who are, um, you know, trying to make the dream happen. Oh, Noah did or does editing for the guy. Right, got you. Okay. Gary, and I love to engage. Okay, man. Setting up shop in the marketplace of ideas. You can go now, but just ping me if you need to interject, okay? Alrighty. Good fate to you and yours. Anyways, if you're a streamer that's watching this live right now, I forbid you from pausing this video to pick at me like a scab and go, me, 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 You're going to keep this video playing and you're going to like it. I'm just joking, but if you do need to pause, now would be a great time while I have my Patreon link on the screen. Go refill your nuggies and warm milky and pay me some money, okay? I'm doing God's work. Organized religion moment. I'm like the white Joel Austin. Why is that in the script? Come on. <laughs> All right, thanks. Time to go. Thank you. Here we go. I had been spending the last month or so working on a couple different scripts for videos when the following clip was brought to my attention last week. It's from a video by the leftist streamer and YouTuber. Xander Hall titled Why Left Tube is Dying and the Next Anti SJW Wave is Right. Here lies Bread Tube. Rising. Oh no, this situation sounds dire. We better take a look, see what's going on. You'll notice, and we talked about this earlier, there are some people online in the political scene right now that are left wing, that are growing and are doing well. Many of the creators that are really blowing up right now are newer essay, commentary, bisexual lighting YouTubers. Good example of this is Noah Samson. We just did a segment earlier covering- Oh, hey, that's me. Noah Samson, how he's actually a dumb f Oh, God damn it. That dude is literally gaining 4,000 subs a day right now. And this worries me. I am worried about channels like Noah just Samson- Just to be clear, sorry. I just want to make it clear. Xandal talks some shit about Noah Samson. Noah Samson can respond, okay? I don't want to make it seem like what I said earlier was like, oh, Xandal can never be criticized. I'm just highlighting that, like, he gets a lot of fucking shit and has done for a long time. But obviously, yeah, if Xandal's talking smack, it's fair enough to respond. Um, we'll see We'll see what he says. I don't know, what, what was Xandal's other points about him, though? Like, obviously, Xandal's saying he's a dumb... 
bleep here. But what was... Did he make any salient points? Or not? And people like Hassan blowing up on YouTube because they're stupid and they can't defend their positions. Now, here's where I pause the video Ooh. and saw Tom Hardy GIF from Mad Max Fury Road. That's bait, right? Has to be. Or maybe it's a performance. Like somebody forced an AI to watch debate streams for a year straight and then had it write a manifesto. And then microwaved oh, Eminem damn. for 20 seconds and had him read it at gunpoint. Can't defend their positions. So oh, damn. He's going into it. He's going into the Xanderhal memes. Fuck. watching the video because you know i support small gamers and that's when i saw this dander hall responds to a message in the chat that mentions several popular black leftist creators by name some of whom are relatively new to youtube try giving more examples lol progressive slash leftist channels by black creators have been getting really big this past year for example i'm so glad you brought this up i'm so glad you brought this up because some of the examples you list here i know i know these people and they're exactly the problem i'm talking about these people so well, i have no problem with black creators getting really big however let me check something really quick Oh my, like, listen, <laughs> is this supposed to be the, the evidence of white supremacy? Because there's a few black content creators and Xander Hall is like, yeah, some of them suck. Like, what? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think this is racism, is it? Like, he's just like saying like, I don't think, I don't think Xander Hall's being like super racist, is he? <laughs> FD signifier is a dumb fuck. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, so he's definitely doing a little bit of trolling. Why else would someone say something like that about FD Signifier of all people? The final boss of the wise uncles of YouTube.com. If he isn't baiting us for hate clicks here and has just deemed himself the racial- I mean, I just showed, I just showed FD Signifier, you know, begging for clout from Hassan and then not getting it. And then saying, thank you, Hassan, for not giving me clout, which is kind of cringe. But I don't know enough about FD Signifier's work, really. I don't really have a, a, a well-thought-out take on it. Um, I've watched, like, the intro to one of his videos. And I thought I thought it was pretty, you know, it was it was a well put together intro, but I lost interest because it was like there's a bunch of there's a bunch of white folks in bread tube or so. I don't know. I didn't really watch it, but I'm sure it's a good video. I'm sure it's a I'm sure it's a solid video with interesting points. Having been like what the fourth or fifth video made about how there's too many white people in uh, in bread tube or whatever. I don't know. I just kind of glaze over with that stuff now. I'm just I'm just like off bread tube videos really. But yeah, I think this is a bit disingenuous trying to paint Xander Hall as some sort of mega racist <laughs> because like, I don't know, he seems to not like this FD Signifier guy. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's anything to do with the fact that FD Signifier is black as such. It's that in fact, it's the person that's made the comment on the stream that has seemingly referenced all of these black creators, it would seem. So yeah. Um. But yeah, I've not. Yeah, I don't know. Well, <laughs> that's my take. I guess. Allowed to make left-wing YouTube content, and that's not much better, is it? No. Nope. Oh, I'm fine with black people coming onto left tube, but I have some conditions. Seems pretty weird. Earlier in this stream, he goes over how um mm. how his channel is uh well dying. It's a pretty unfortunate segment, but I assumed at this point him lashing out here had something to do with that. But eventually, he gets to a claim of sorts. He's gonna be on the screen for a little while, so just a heads up if a radiation sickness warning shows up on your HUD. Just so you might not notice, but you paused on him saying, "I don't think he's a racial arbiter of left-wing content." Yeah, this seems a bit, bit. Um, when's that bad faith person going to come in? Because I, I, I don't know. This seems a bit disingenuous. Yeah, exactly. I just said, yeah. Where's that fucking stupid paperclip gone? I thought the point was you're going to come in when you're being bad faith. Where's Gary gone? Like you're literally just Peyton Zander with some sort of like racist dude who wants to stop black people from getting into the space. Um, you should probably just pause the video and go take a shower. FD signifier is a dumb fuck. I was iffy on him for a while. He's been shit talking the debate bro thing for a while now. Uh, he's also gone on Twitter and said some dumb fuck shit about like bread tube debate bros and stuff like that. Here's the thing. People like FD signifier, Noah Sampson, these all have one thing in common. They hate and non-stop shit talk debate bros. Don't just shit talk the concept of being a debate bro and claim that debate bros are oh, all toxic assholes, gross. assholes who make the left worse. You're starting to see that rhetoric get really popular. I mean, yeah, I don't like burping on stream, but ugh, I don't know. This is just like the kind of snarky kind of like, like, look, I don't, I, I think it's okay for Noah Sampson to like talk a bit of shit, to talk a bit of shit back to Xander Hall. Xander Hall was calling him a dumb fuck, but like, he, he's kind of gone nuclear and he's trying to make out <laughs> like he's some sort of mega racist dude or something like Jesus.
among the left right now. You guys notice how everyone I meet and interact with in my life ends up calling me an asshole? It's so weird. That rhetoric is getting really popular right now. Whoever's doing that, we gotta stop. Noah. Okay, sorry. Here, let's let him finish making his point. Do you think that the left online would do better with people like Hassan and Noah Sampson and FD Signifier being the largest figures on it? The types of people who say debate is bad, who literally say debating is bad, people who literally as a concept are against debate and defending your ideas and they publicly say What's going so on my do you Discord? think that this is what we want representing the left okay so xander hall says that hassan feek and i are as a concept against debate and defending our ideas and goes on to conclude that this will inevitably end in a weakening of the online left because i'm starting to see the online left turn into what it was back during the gamergate era one of the biggest common talking so, points i think i think um i've got quite a different perspective than xander hall on this stuff because um i think I think Xander Hall really values the, the what content can do for like the left, and I'm very cynical about that. Um, you know, I definitely see it more as a kind of content thing. But like, Xander Hall seems to really believe in the idea that this content is is doing something more than just being content, or maybe changing a few minds or something like that. Um, so yeah. I don't know. I, I don't. But but yeah. I, I maybe I'm a bit too cynical. Maybe I could be moved on it a little bit. Like this stuff with Doctor K. Definitely meant more to me than just content. But then I still view it as content, and I call it just content. And someone even commented on one of the videos, and was like, "Hey, I know you just say it's just content, but you know this seems like it means something a bit more to you than that, or something." But yeah, I don't know. He's very passionate. Yeah. And I think even if I maybe disagree with like some of his perspectives, um, I, I, you know, do like the passion that he's got. I don't know. I think Xandor has got like a, a, a big career ahead of him in content creation. You know, I wish I would done content when I was in like my early 20s. Although if I was, I'd probably have been cringe. And it wasn't really possible because YouTube had only really just started and whatnot. If I may be a radical centrist who agrees with both points of view, I fucking don't want to go back to 2016 internet where queer people were shit on and we had ha 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 SJW owned compilations all over. Thanks for the bits. And I think, okay, so yeah, I think that there's a point, there's some sort of point in that, right? Where, like, think about 2016, right? Think about 2016. And you had like, um... You, you, okay, you had, what was it? What am I trying to say? You had, people were like, oh, the left won't debate us. And it was true. Like, there weren't many people on the debate, that, on the left that were willing to come and debate. And in fact, it was funny, because when, like, Christy Winters debated Sargon of Akkad, even though Christy Winters is, like, some form of lib or whatever, like, she absolutely blew Sargon the fuck out. It was incredible, in all honesty. Um, but anyway, like generally speaking, there was this kind of vibe that the left didn't want to debate and so on. And now there's a lot more people that are willing to test their metal in the marketplace of ideas for whatever that's worth. And it's even got to the point where some rightoids now who were previously like, oh, no, the left won't debate us. are now like, I don't want to debate the left because they're just chasing clout or they're just doing this or they're just doing that, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think that... Um, It is it is a bit it is a bit troubling for me that someone like Hassan, like, is completely unwilling to like test their ideas, and then when they do, when they, and this is what's funny about the whole fact that a lot of these people seemingly haven't really done much to criticise Hassan, maybe beyond a couple of tweets or something, for his is you know flipping out on that trans person. But it's funny because that came about because Hassan was very poorly able to represent his position on trans issues when he was speaking to that. It was a Christian Walker. Like he was he was floundering a lot in that conversation. And there were some points he made that I thought were good. You know, I didn't think like I didn't think he did that bad when he was speaking about the um the house stuff. You know, talking about the housing stuff. But certainly um when he was speaking about the trans issues, I think he didn't do a great job. But to me, my view on that was definitely compounded when he didn't really seem to realise what a bad job he'd done. And he, and he lashed out at his audience for pointing out some of the issues. Um, 
and 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 it's sort of wearing this this as a badge of pride that like well i'm not going to talk to anyone about any of my ideas because you're just a debate bro you know and it's kind of like like i get it if you don't want to but like people will happily make these like lengthy videos talking about this and shit talking and then when it comes to actually having a discussion sometimes they're like oh no i don't want to do that and you're like well don't fucking talk so much shit in your video then <laughs> you know But yeah, honestly, I yeah, it is kind of disappointing that like Hassan, who's the biggest streamer, it seems completely unwilling to really have a meaningful discussion with someone because Destiny owned him a few years ago over a debate about the N word. But that that's what it reads as to me. I think it's a lot of cope from Hassan. Um, you know, stay mad. Who's mad? I'm not mad. I'm chill. It's not me that isn't afraid to speak to someone about my ideas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, why defend your ideas in front of an audience where you can just watch an entire season of MasterChef and it's seemingly acceptable to a lot of people, I guess. Anyway, let's continue. Hassan's just like any other streamer. Hassan's just like any other streamer. He's like, any I've said this in my last video, he's like any other streamer now. And that's fine. I don't really care. But he's got to cut the shit with this presentation of like, you know, in any way that he is he is doing anything more than just streaming and just making content and stuff. But yeah. From the right during this era was the left was too afraid to debate and defend their positions. That's why Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro blew up so much. It's because they it? debated and they didn't debate well and they weren't telling the truth. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, I, I can't, I can't, I've got to poke a bit of fun here, okay? Do you remember that meme of like Xander Hall? <laughs> And it was like different segments of the left. And it was like tankies and woke skulls. Then I've got a picture of that. That's a classic meme. What is all this? Edgy CSGO videos, anti feminism, LGBT awareness, anti Biden sentiment, the left is unstable. Maybe I'm missing something, but this whole thing seems like a nothing but like an online content creator spat. I mean, what were you expecting it to be? <laughs> this is just drama, basically. This is what it boils down to. I don't know what you're expecting from this. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's not going to... I don't... Yeah, if you're coming into this expecting anything other than drama. This entire video is literally the NC Cope stream in video essay form. They just debated. Just the fact they were willing to debate gave them more credibility than the left, because nobody on the left wanted to debate. Yes, famously credible intellectuals Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro. While you're putting your finger in the little it's hole. Rubber. So where is Zan Man getting this impression about? Um, I mean, listen, it's easy to kind of snarkily dismiss people like Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson, but like, I mean, I. <laughs> You can just play. A, you can just play a clip of them saying some stupid shit and act like no one takes them seriously. But like a lot of people do, they're huge figures with massive followings. <laughs> like, what is this fucking? Oh, they said something stupid once. <laughs> like, come on, that's a bit fucking silly, isn't it? Do you not see like the 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 influence they have? It's easy to pick out a clip of anyone saying something dumb. Jesus, that's a bit un unfortunate. Us. Well, I have a few ideas. I've gathered some clips together of criticisms made about debate bros by the people he's mentioned. These are things that I both agree with and think may be the source of this characterization. Sorry if this is a bit tedious, but I think it could be potentially helpful to have all of these critiques sort of compiled here. To give a little context as to the state of this riveting discourse, during a recent live stream, Hassan voiced some criticisms about the debate bros fear and the audiences it tends to cultivate. I agree, but I also see the downside of never having your viewpoints challenged with opposing views. Yawn. Okay, here's the thing. This notion that you are having your opinions challenged in the marketplace of ideas is a silly one. That would make Ben Shapiro the most intelligent person on the internet. Hey, you're not a man, you think you're a man. If I call you a most recently, most this is why time. I absolutely fucking despise debate bros, because you don't care about the actual morality behind the ideology. That Wait, what? <laughs> this is what I mean about the Hassan, Sim Hassan simping. This is just Hassan agrees with me, so I'm putting it in. Like, Hassan is, is like, 
like it's it's funny like have we missed have we missed the point at which there's like a valid critique of him engage like if he truly believes all of this why is he having this christian walker guy round and having a debate about trans issues when he clearly doesn't have the ability to push back on the points or whatever like what this this is madness this is just a san simping this is just a san simping like I don't know. I just lose a bit of respect when people are like so desperate to simp for Hassan when there's like completely salient critiques you can make of him. I don't know. That you I supposedly believe in. You don't care about the outcomes. You do not have like a well-grounded materialist perspective on issues. You are simply going towards who is the most powerful intellectual gladiator. FT Signifiers Break Bread is a video that covers the history and current state of BreadTube or LeftTube and the barriers posed to non-white creators on this platform. There's a section in this video that had some things to say about debate bros. Let's take a look at a clip. And this problem with debate bros and their fandom who understand make up a very significant chunk of LeftTube viewing, including my own, is the problem of most white LeftTube both creators and consumers which is for all of the theory and the research and outward rejection of white supremacy on paper, the vast majority have not taken the time to dismantle the white racial frame through which they see the world. So even with the best intentions, the behavior and viewpoints born out of this space is still going to be rooted in race. Wait, I don't think the point is Hassan is right. Seems like more of a description of the debate bro debate. Oh, come on. Hokies alum, you're being super generous there. Clearly, this Noah guy likes Hassan. He's expressed, um, you know, gratitude at Hassan playing his videos on stream. And that's fine. I just find it a bit weird that, like, I don't know, maybe I missed a video or maybe I missed a tweet. But it seems like he had nothing to say about this really bad debate that he did with this Christian Walker guy. So it's like he's he's on Hassan saying debating stupid, but then he's happy to debate poorly some, some random conservative dude from TikTok. And then also he's not seemingly called out his response to chat after they criticized him for it. Um, maybe he's not aware if we want to be super generous, but yeah, it just, it just feels, um, you know, it just feel it just feels like a bit clout, clout beggy. I don't know. I don't like it. His frameworks, unless the concept of whiteness is addressed. Essentially, if you read Marx and Trotsky and Gramsci and, what you want to do, Ski, and whomever else, but not Du Bois, Fanon, Hooks, Crenshaw, etc., you oh might be a leftist white supremacist. And thus. <laughs> oh my God, that's so cringe. <laughs> that is so fucking cringe. I mean, who did he reference there? intentions the behavior and viewpoints born out of this space is still going to be rooted in racist frameworks unless the concept of whiteness is addressed essentially if you read marx and trotsky and gramsci and what you want to do ski and wait gramsci's italian gramsci's a person of color what are we doing come on now you really gonna tell me that gramsci's a white dude get out of here come on now White people hate being called out. Me, 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 me. Listen, I don't give a shit about you. Oh, oh, you're white and you're getting criticized and you don't like it. Listen, I'm way more fucking woke than you are. I can be way more woke than you on this shit, okay? When you're flubbing when debating a conservative TikToker, you've fucked up. True, Gwendolyn. Thank you very much for the bits. Sounds like it. Me, 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 That's all I hear when I hear you fucking woke in chat complaining, okay? If you want me to be racist, I'll be racist, okay? It might make you biased. I mean, there's something I think are legit to read. else, But not Du Bois, Fanon, Hooks, Crenshaw. Du Bois is okay. Fanon is, um, was us wretched of the earth, right? I've not personally read it, but, um... I mean, Crenshaw, like, that's fucking lip shit. <laughs> Etc. You might be a leftist white supremacist. And thus, this colors the nature of leftist content and inadvertently makes things dangerous for the marginalized voices that get caught in the wake of this highly toxic, highly negative energy. If that last part sounded oddly specific, don't worry, we'll get to that. Foreshadowing is a narrative I don't think there's a problem. I don't think there's a problem with, like, you know, I don't think there's a problem with, like, reading, um, whatever author to give a, a you know a racial aspect or whatever like but the idea that if you don't you somehow like uh, white supremacist did he say white supremacist or like 
This is one thing I find. It's like people talk about a white supremacist structure, but then they make an accusation that one is an individual white supremacist, which you're 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 fucking up your own analysis there, friend. Because just because you're the outcome of like a white supremacist structure doesn't mean you are individually a white supremacist. Like, I need to go back and li listen to that. Let me see again. And Trotsky and Gramsci and what you want to do, Ski, and whomever else, but not Du Bois, Fanon, Hooks, Crenshaw, etc. You might be a leftist white supremacist. And th you might be a leftist white supremacist. That's a very different claim to like talking about a structure of white supremacy that exists or something like that. I mean, yeah, that's kind of cringe, bro. Like, <laughs> are we, what are we doing? Are we doing like a systemic analysis, or are we doing individual um, finger wagging and scolding here? Like, what's the what's the play? Like, because to me, it makes more like. Look, I fully accept that like I'm the output of a, you know, white supremacist power structure or whatever. Like, I fully accept that and know that I've got certain biases and certain views and whatever, you know, and genuinely. You do have to be considerate of that when you're talking about things and when you're analyzing things and stuff like that. But there's a difference between that and understanding that and trying to come to terms with that and trying to, you know, look at the situation versus like you are a white supremacist. Like that's just unironically lib shit because you're making like an individual claim um, about what is actually a structural or systemic issue. So yeah, it's kind of cringe, bro. Thus, this colors the nature of leftist content and inadvertently makes things dangerous for the marginalized voices that get caught in the wake of this highly toxic, highly negative energy. If that last part sounded oddly specific, don't worry, we'll get to that. Foreshadowing is a narrative technique when you talk about something and you talk about it again later. My most vocal criticism of Debate Bros came in the follow-up video to my left tube guide with a section on Debate Bros. Not gonna lie, I wrote that script in about an hour, so not my cleanest work. I also played some out of context clips of Vosh. Um, it was meant to be a joke, but it ended up just being me playing out of context clips of Vosh. So to the gamer gods, I formally and humbly apologize. To repent for my clip chimping sins, I will be live streaming Dark Souls this week, so make sure to press subscribe and hit that fucking bell, you, you piece of shit, you little shit worm. But the point of that section was to document some of the problems with debate bros that I had missed in my initial video, where I promoted a bunch of people, some of them rather uncritically. My main points were, don't rely on debate streamers as your sole source of information, True. and don't take anything your gamer of choice says at face value. And True. these are things that I stand by. They're also particularly relevant to today's video. I totally agree with that. That's the thing. Like, that's a totally salient point, okay? Like, yeah, I agree. 100% with that. So what? what's with all the other bullshit? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, that's completely agreeable. I don't know anyone that would disagree with that. And any good debate bro streamer worth their salt would hopefully, um, you know, may maybe some don't, but like, you, you ought, to, um, you ought to, to say that to your audience too. Because I like the meme. I like killing the meme. It's a funny meme. Yeah. Saliency achieved. I think somebody missed part of what Fig's trying to do. What, FD signifier? I mean, look, I get it, right? I, I you know, as I say, I recognize, um, you know. I recognize that, um, we are all the product of our environment and whatever. I don't know. Anyway, like I say, I'm, I can only go off what the video is presenting me without watching the original video in its full context. So I'm just going off what's been presented, which in this video is supposed to be favorable. But, you know, I just note that there, there's that issue there, which to me is um, in opposition to, to how I would consider, a, you know, a left wing analysis, which is about structures, systems, incentives and output to those rather than an individual or you might be a white supremacist type of thing. I don't know. It's just a bit cringe for me. Now, when Xander Hall takes what we've said here and elevates it to the claim that we are against debate as a concept, well, this is just not true. I'm going to play some clips that refute this point now. Again, incredibly tedious. I apologize, but potentially helpful for context and also to prove that we are coming in good faith when we criticize debate bros. Pandering to the good faith gaze, if you will. Here is Hassan from that same segment of his stream where he acknowledges the utility of debate. I'm not saying that, like, there is no value to responding or learning and recognizing the talking points that right-wingers engage in. Of course there is. People, especially right-wingers in general, 
love to arm themselves with the same talking points that they're disseminating out of think tanks. Unless you're talking to like a total dumbass right winger, you're going to hear some fucking takes that you will hear from Ben Shapiro verbatim. So there is value to learning what those talking points are and understanding why they're fucking stupid. Here is Feek opening the debate bro section in Break Bread with some concessions. And to be fair, if I had it in me to watch the three and four hour streams of these guys talking and playing video games, I doubt I would have anything negative to say about 95% of what they do on stream. And I understand that when you're talking for that long, you're liable to say some things that maybe you wish you hadn't have said. I don't individually think that these are bad people or even that they need to be ousted from the left. I think that that very concept of ousting people is part of the problem, really. Look at all that good faith. So much good faith. You're not even going to believe how much faith is good in there. That's interesting, yeah. Like I say, I, you know, I just thought it was funny the way that that guy was clout begging Hassan and got rejected, but... I don't know much about FD Signifier's content. I was just highlighting that that comment was a bit weird, champ. But um, yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. Yeah. Good faith all the time. One of the things I hear thrown around the debate zone a lot is the concept of the left having a diversity of tactics. So different styles of content for different audiences. All what is this? We don't police each other's actions or snitch on each other to pigs of the media. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this a, what is this? Wait a second. Someone's just hopping over a turnstile. Where, where, where does not paying a fare for public transport come into diversity of tactics? Where is this from? Is this a meme or something? I got on the bus without paying and told the driver he's a wanker. That's, that's praxis, baby. What is this? And someone's got a dustbin. I don't know. What's with the donut? What's what is there a donut? I don't know. A bike lock? I think I know what that's supposed to represent. I don't know. This is a bit cringe, but it's only a short thing, I guess. All with the intent of spreading leftism as far and wide as possible. And on a macro lens, the better we are at making this content, the more views it gets, and the wider audiences are cultivated, the better off we will be. Because this will mean less people gravitating towards right-wing content and more people learning about socialism. And that all sounds good to me. No notes. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Okay, well, one note. Uh, is what we do on here an actual political force, or is it entertainment? If so, how can it's that be- It's entertainment! Listen, I've been talking about this forever. It's entertainment. It's not a political force. You're fooling yourself if you think that this is anything more than entertainment with some maybe side benefits. Like, maybe someone, maybe some people learn a thing or two, etc. Online is not a, a meaningful political force, okay? The sooner people come to terms with that, the better off we'll all be. Because then if you are interested in doing like a political thing, okay, then you can you can point you can do whatever's needed to do that, right? So yeah. I think that um I mean I highlighted that earlier, that's kind of where I'm a bit more cynical than Xander Hall is. Um and if listen, if Noah recognizes that this is all about entertainment, then fair play to him. That's a, a point in his favour. But we'll see what he says. Be quantified. If not, just how much are we overvaluing our utility to society beyond carving out a new consumer demographic of leftist yes! content? If the style of leftism Noah, I based. want to promote is different than your style, and it's a style that you don't based. like, is this going to be an issue? Are you going to use your large platform to strike me down? Noah, your vague post. Okay. I actually think Noah's got quite a good analysis there, and I do agree with that. I agree that, um, you know, people overvalue or overstate the value of the content they create. And for me, I think that it's better just to be a bit more honest and upfront about the fact that it is just really primarily entertainment and there could be secondary goods that come of that but it is entertainment at the end of the day um you know you've got to feed the algorithm what is going to get you the views basically oh okay in the u.s we have partial public funding for public transit with fair box recovery requ requirement First strikes are a tactic to object to the value of mass transit and the inherent classism of mass transit fares. Okay. Well, as long as it's something that's organized, I guess. I mean, I don't think that, like, some random person just not paying a fare is, like, uh, you know, praxis, right? I don't know, chilling down south. I'm going to take him at his word, I guess. I think that it's a legitimate point, and I do think that people need to are on the side of entertainment over um, anything else. Because the thing is, is like, let's say you do think this is, um, you know, let's say that you do say this is something like, you know, if someone asked me, why did you make those Dr. K videos? I would answer because I'm a content creator. 
because I make interesting content. Now, it was personally an issue that I was interested in talking about, but like, if you watch it, I'm not anticipating or expecting it to become, you know, like a meaningful political change or something like that. It is just content at the end of the day. So, you know, even in myself, I try and be extremely consistent in that. But I think the problem is, is that some people will, um, you know, some people, some people will overstate. Like, who remembers the classic thing of like, I'm de-radicalizing Nazis. I'm de-radicalizing Nazis. Now, obviously, there is some merit in the idea that you're putting out certain talking points that people are listening to, and they're getting a better insight or idea about a certain um, topic or something like that. But fundamentally, it is entertainment that you're doing. And I think that if you present it as more than that, you have the effect of making it seem like contributing to you by subbing, donating, etc. is actually some sort of meaningful political action. When in reality, it's just supporting entertainment that you like, which is fine. But don't think of it as more than it is. I don't know. Anyway... Just an aside. Dang. Are all forms of content equal when it comes to learning? No, stop it. So many questions, no answers for now. Okay, that was weird, man. What, have you never heard of the Socratic method? Oh, okay, yeah. Never mind, I like it. I like that a whole lot. Okay. Ugh, that's so good. All right. Oh my God. Up the Briefly, I would like to take a deep dive into an interaction I had recently that I think might be helpful for illustrating some of the problems with online communication, specifically regarding the topic of debate. It's a little detour, but stay with me, okay? I'm gonna get better at writing one day. My ADHD pills are in the mail. So I tweeted this a few weeks ago, saying that basically, I do not think white genocide is something that we should be debating. The long debunked white supremacist talking point about the white population being eradicated through immigration. Gary, I need you. Hey, y'all. Explain to them why this tweet is a problem for you and your people over there. Gladly. In the debate sphere, there's a conception of the archetypal Twitter lefty that says things like human rights aren't up for debate or it's not my job to educate you. This, in our minds, inhibits the left's ability to argue for concrete policy positions because if we can't have difficult conversations, we can't solve difficult problems. This might have been what Xander Hall was referencing when he was talking about you being unwilling to debate. This tweet plays into that stereotype and makes you look really dumb. That's me quoting them. I don't I don't think you're dumb. No, I think you're a nice enough guy. Thanks, uh, Gary. Maybe it'll be useful. I mean, if the, the thing is, is like, white gen- like... <sighs> The thing is, is I feel this is where it gets a bit complicated because people like people will, will seemingly admit that it's content and stuff. But then when challenged about having a piece of content about a controversial issue, they'll revert back to, oh, well, you know, but the thing is, we've got to debate it because people are talking about it. And it's like, well, is it content then or is it like a bit of both or is it, you know, you're seriously doing like something that's going to meaningfully change the perspective of people because it's a talking point? And the truth is it probably is a bit of both. But people hardcore defend it on the basis of, well, this is a conversation that's happening. We need to have it. Like, let's be real. The reason that you're having a spicy conversation is because it's content. <laughs> like, that's what this is all about at the end of the day. Hey, thanks a lot. That's really generous of you. Doxing myself. Hey. This is my flight number heading to Mexico. Have a good one, Shud. Make some good Dr. K shit in my absence. Holy shit, I get 255 characters. Wow, that's really cool. Shout out to my haters. I'll be drinking commie rum from Cuba and banging some hoe. Thank you very much for the $14.51. I appreciate it. <laughs> and have a good time, okay? Currently looking up your flight now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, it's, it's a very complicated one for me because on the one hand, like I do see the merit in the idea that like, Acting like this is verboten. What's that? Is it a Nazi word or a German word? <laughs> verboten. Is that German? I know there's some words that are like associated with Nazis and you shouldn't really say it because it's a bit spicy. Like the one about the lying press. Verboten's fine, isn't it? Is it verboten as in forbidden? Verboten is the German N word. Well, I'm going to start saying it more. Verboten is forbidden. Thank you. So yeah, when it, like the idea that a topic is verboten and we can't possibly talk about it because a bunch of people online have decided that it's not up for debate. And yeah, it's just a bit like, okay, but who who's decided that anyway? I don't know. 
if you just clarify what you meant here. Sure, Gary. Sounds good. As long as racist and fascist and other bad ideas exist, they should be challenged. Whether that's through debate, essays, one-on-one -on -one communication, iMessage, Tinder, Hinge, no writing it on the ground in the woods, whatever. Someone pointed out the fact that Tucker Carlson goes on his show every night and uses white genocide rhetoric for hours on end in front of millions of people. That's a good point. It's not like it's not happening. As much as I'd love to be able to say white genocide doesn't exist and be done with it, because it doesn't, I recognize that for other people in different areas of the political spectrum, it's not that simple, especially in the general okay. American population. We still got a lot of work to do getting them caught up. Here's the original image that led me to tweeting this. This image. Well, what was this? Destiny was debating someone. Was it on Politically Provoked? I can't even remember. Content moves so quickly, doesn't it? To me is what sociologists might call sussy wussy. Two white dudes on a live stream titled Debating White Genocide. Racism. Is it really that bad? Noah, I can understand why this looks problematic to you. But the Kill thing is, is those it, dudes yeah. were actually providing arguments against it. Right. And that's good, right? Yeah. Somebody's got to do it. I suppose that's true. However, my disdain for the idea of still having to debate things like white genocide comes from somewhere. Mainly, it comes from the part of me that feels like the real world significance of de-radicalization by YouTube content has a tendency to be overstated online. Or to put it another I way, that. converting to leftism by consuming debate content can come with certain side effects. Wait, hang on. No, I don't. I, <laughs> I'm not on board with. Well, mm, OK, let's see what you've got to say. Let's see what you've got to say first, OK? But I do, I do think that, so the way I conceive of it is, is, um, you know, the way I conceive of it is that oftentimes people will just go. In fact, in fact, I tweeted about this earlier. Would you believe it? Okay. I tweeted about this earlier. And then everyone was memeing in the replies. How I escaped radicalization. Man who, si who simply hopped from the right-wing radical bandwagon to the left-wing radical bandwagon. And I think the way I see it is how I went from consuming one type of content to another type of content. Because I, you know, my interest and, and stuff I talk about sometimes relates to like, um, like that sort of thing. And I think that this is a, this is an issue where people, people will, um, act like moving from watching Nick Frentes to watching Vosh. Like, don't get me wrong. I'd rather someone is consuming content, which is less egregious or whatever. But like, you are just consuming another kind of content. Like, how substantively have, you know, like if you're, if you're in your bedroom watching one type of content on one day, and then a couple of weeks later, you're watching another type of content, what has meaningfully changed politically in the world? You know, what impact has been had on the world? You know? I'd rather people watch what I like. I mean, yeah, like, Vosh aligns more closely with me than Nick Frentes. If you want to watch Nick Frentes, that's up to you. I can't change that. But obviously, for me personally, I'd rather someone listen to Vosh than Nick Frentes, because I think Nick Frentes, you know, says some pretty fucked up shit sometimes. Let's get back to this. Hopefully you heard what I said. You might have had a de-radicalization experience thanks to someone like Vosh or Destiny or Good even Sandra, hub. God help you. And that's great. Seriously, I'm not here to knock on that. The less alt-right, the better. But my concern is that by staying in these spaces, it becomes easy to maintain habits of consumption that can inhibit your ability to recognize the reactionary tendencies that you or the people around you might still hold. Noah, echo chamber characteristics can be found in any online community, right? That's the basis of how they form, by bringing like-minded people together. There will always be issues like the ones that you mentioned. That's true. But the debate bro ozone echo chamber seem to have a uniquely grading effect due to their highly charged environments, massive platforms, and self-appointed status as the gladiators of- Oh yeah, I do remember this tweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was a bit cringe. Online anti-fascism. One of the biggest problems back in 2014 and 2016 is there were no lefties online who weren't, you know, insane to say, no, we don't actually believe that all white people are evil and, and we don't want to do this, this, and this that you claim you want to do. It wasn't until people like Destiny and Vosh and me and, and Chud Logic and Demon Mama and just like oh! left-wing debate people came along that argued against those effectively that you really started to see that narrative start to get pushed down. There are a few examples I could use here to illustrate my point, but why don't we start with Xander Hall? Sorry, guy. There's a new lol cow in town and it isn't a feminist gaming journalist this time. It's you, Zan. Xander. Alexander Halia Ocasio-Cortez. Sorry, it's not funny at all, actually. The most viewed video on Xander Hall's channel is called How I Fell Down the Alt-Right Pipeline and Escaped. It's from December of 2019. We've seen this story before, but basically... I'm sorry, Zan, but you got to change the thumbnail for this. Actually, the most viewed video on Xander... <laughs> you got to change the thumbnail for this. 
<laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Look at the thumbnail. Come on, bro. Update the thumbnail. Make it make it make it one of you with blonde hair or something. Do it like a re revamp thumbnail. It's the look on his face as well. It's the look on his face too. <laughs> oh. That was young Zan. That was young Zander Hall. Hall's channel is called How I Fell Down the Alt-Right Pipeline and Escaped. It's from December of 2019. We've seen this story before, but basically, he got into some pepe shenanigans with his gamer friends and was eventually pulled out of it. The thing that pulled him out, in his case, was Destiny's debate with JonTron, where Destiny ended Nazism once and for all, or something like that. I didn't, I don't know, I didn't watch it. He concludes this 48-minute video with what he sees as the most important aspect of online politics as he moves forward on his journey into leftism. There's one thing above all of this that may be the most important thing, and that's optics. I know I'm not just speaking for myself when I say that the stereotype of an SJW is off-putting to most people. Don't let yourself fit into the mold of the straw man that reactionaries have made of us. If we defy their expectations and their stereotypes, they won't know how to counter us. Us leftists, we have facts, statistics, data, and even historical context on our side. If people like us can drown out the loud minority that the right uses to make their hit pieces, they won't have any more material. First of all, what did this person do to you? They look fine. They look good. I want a portable ball sack. Where do you even get that? I love this though. He's like, yeah, you can be a leftist as long as you're not. I just, I hate that meme where it's like someone throws up someone that's supposed to be cringe and it's like, oh, they look cool actually. It's like, come on, <laughs> please, I'm begging you. Like they look cringe. They're supposed to be cringe. Don't defend the, the cringe version of the SGW, okay? Um, But look, Here's the truth of it, okay? Here's the truth of it, right? Here's what it is. Like, Xander Hall dresses it up a bit with, like, the optics and stuff like that. The reality is this, okay? People don't like having their finger wagged at them. <laughs> All right? <laughs> when you're speaking to someone, it's that classic thing of you're going to catch more flies with honey than vinegar. And going up to some, you know, person in the street or whatever and trying to talk to them about ideas, you ain't going to fucking finger wag your way into them agreeing with you, if that's your concern, right? If your concern is changing people's minds. Um, a lot of the time, people, like, w w are open to ideas. Like, you can appeal to people in different ways. Like, for example, you know, you can talk about live and let live or whatever, right? There's different ways you can approach it. But the idea of finger wagging your way to get someone to believe, to, to agree with you, is just kind of silly. And I think that's what Xander Hall's getting at in that clip, you know? And, um, yeah, like, look, listen, I don't really care about, like, being called a, a, a racial slur for a white person or whatever bullshit, right? It doesn't bother me. Um, I think, though, that, like, people just need to be a bit more chill. Some of those memes as well. It's just unnecessary, like, racial animus that is just, is just unnecessary. And obviously, you know, I have to preface this because otherwise people make silly comments. Yes, obviously, if you're racist against black people, that is bad and you shouldn't do that. OK, obviously, that's my belief. Right. And by the same token, if you've and I know people don't like it being called a certain thing, so don't worry, I won't. But if you've got an animus against someone on the basis of the race that they are um, and you try and you try and say that in a way that is like, um jokey or whatever but really deep down you've got those feelings like yeah that's that sucks don't do that right like you know be excellent to each other i think is is a good good way to look at it and um i think the problem people make is that they think that stuff that they say which is going to appeal to primarily people that already agree with them yeah, like the stuff about the boy the boy discourse is a great example of that, right? Now, fortunately, much of this stuff happens online, so it doesn't really mean that much in the real world anyway. But like, I, I cannot think of a single person that you're going to get on board to your political ideas by, by talking to them about not using the word boy with an I in a self-referential way because it's somehow a race thing. And that's a black-only term. Like, yeah. Be humble. Be humble about the fact, you know, it's there, there for the great, there, but for the grace of God, go I. Right? You are the, are the product of your circumstances, just like anyone else's, and you're not smarter or cleverer or better than anyone else, just because you happen to have reached a position in your life where you have got like the right social ideas about stuff or whatever. Right? Like, you know, 
be humble and appreciate that there's people out there who aren't quite as far along as you and and be you know don't don't be so fucking an ass about it like this to me is the the flavor of what we're talking about here right you can call it optics if you want and people get turned off by that people don't like the idea of optics or whatever um but yeah like if your concern is genuinely reaching people that don't already agree with you you're probably gonna have to be eat a bit of humble pie and uh meet someone where they are but yeah you know drop the smug sense of superiority and again you know a lot of this is just content so what does it really matter but it depends what your your true motives and goals are you know if you really are interested in changing minds then you're probably going to have to make some concessions on the way that you talk about things or discuss things in order to facilitate that outcome big words I want those filthy fucking degenerate SJWs because they make us look very bad. I know this because right wingers told me so. Well, let's cut him some slack. That was two years ago. He's probably grown up and become a big boy now. Let's see what he's up to. One of the biggest common talking points from the right during this era was the left was too afraid to debate and defend their positions. Nobody on the left wanted to debate. The left at the time were high and mighty, BuzzFeed videos, feminist like video essay content, woke scoldy, high and mighty, preachy, non-funny, non-edgy, milk toast, uh, fucking white wa- not whitewashed, fucking sugar sugar, uh, sugar sweet, being condescending left-wing content made by, well, trans people with, with pink hair, okay, and blue hair, which obviously isn't a problem in and of itself, but it does kind of make the left, you know, it makes right-wing, gives white, right-wingers, makes them mad. Oh, I feel, I feel like I've heard this somewhere before. Hmm. This hyperfixation on optics is indicative of a framework of political- Hmm. Now look, I'll say that that was an unnecessary thing for Xanderhul to say, okay? I'll uh, I'll throw it in there. I think I think that it's unnecessary. Like the trans thing is irrelevant, right? But it's like so we're going to focus in hyper in on that. I mean, look, look, maybe I'm making an idiot of myself here. Has he said anything about what Hassan did after he got criticised over the uh, debate with uh, with Christian Walker? Does he just not know about it? Like, if you're, if you're going to be critical of Xanderhal for that line, which is, you know, fair enough, I'd expect you to be a bit more critical about fucking Hassan and what he said to that person that he kicked out of his chat. But it, I don't know. It seems like, it seems like maybe there's, it's only worth being outraged if it's someone you can dunk on and it doesn't matter if, uh, you know, they don't like you. Um, you know, so it's just, it's just funny focusing, hyper-focusing on that, which I admit is a kind of shitty thing to throw in there, okay? No, he is a fan of Asan. He's, he's publicly tweeted out and said, oh, thanks for watching my video, Asan. Yes, Fanya, exactly. These people never keep the same energy for the people they like. That's exactly my point. And I do think that, um... You know, Xanderhal could have expressed that in a better way, for sure. Like, you know, it's so unnecessary to talk about the trans thing. But, like, at the end of the day, like, uh, I think there is some validity in the point that he's proposing. Um, even even if it is purely... No, why won't he shit on Hassan? Listen, born sinning Yonko. Listen, I appreciate that you, uh, you know, have got brain worms from your simpery. But it's a valid point. It's a salient point. But yeah. To be fair, that's true for Chuddy as well. How so? Who have I not called out that I should have called out or spoken about? What's this? Oh. <sighs> 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 Thought that views the world through a lens of what the right will think of us and a little more and that's what i take issue with basing your politics on practicality is a good thing but when the crux of your argument rests upon dictating wait a term... second no 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 wait I, I i i yeah listen whatever your name is yes i accept that by its nature i will react differently as to whether i like someone or dislike someone i don't deny that right but you're being very dishonest in the way that you're framing that because that's not what i'm criticizing noah for here okay if Noah was critical of Hassan, but maybe was softer because he likes him, like at least he's criticised, that's fine. But the fact that, to my knowledge, he hasn't made any content or any discussion or any discourse. Maybe there's a tweet someone could link me, which I'll happily look at. Maybe there's something like that. But to my knowledge, you know, maybe just doesn't know 
but he hasn't made any content critical of that and i appreciate you can't know everything all of the time but it's just kind of surprising to me that like we're going heavy into it on xanderhall You sound like a mad ex when you talk about Hassan. I'm not a mad ex at all. I mean, <laughs> I feel like you're putting a lot, I feel like you're projecting a lot onto me what, you know, what you want me to, to think or say. Xander was an easy, cheap target. Yeah, I mean, you know, he literally threw up his viewer stats and was like having to go at him for that. Now look, listen, <laughs> I'm, that's not, I, I think it's good memes <laughs> to attack someone for their viewers. It could be a good laugh, but like he kind of like is trying to do the, reasonable critique thing i'm good faith i've got good faith gary here and then just like shitting on him in unfair ways i don't know bit bit weird to me <laughs> okay listen if you can't see my point which is that he seems super critical of like xanderhall making you know, a potentially kind of transphobic s comment. I, I don't know if I call it transphobic as such, but I can see how someone would look at it and go, that's transphobic, whatever, right? But but he's willing to, he's going in so heavy on Zanderhall for that by, you know, focusing on it. And this is the other thing these people do as well, which really annoys me, right? Is sometimes they won't even like specifically criticize what's being said. They'll just play it and be like, huh. it's like almost like, look at that. That's bad, isn't it? You know? I mean, if it was just someone like saying, calling someone the N word, like I'd be like, okay, yeah, fair enough. You've made your point. That's pretty obvious what that is. But when it's just a generic sort of comment like that. Yeah, exactly. It's like, come on, do a bit of work, break it down. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it was a shitty thing for Zandal to say, for sure. But it's, it just frustrates me. And I just, you know, I can't help but shake the feeling that there's, you know, allegiances and clout at play here. And there always is. But like, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. In terms of how other people should look and act and uh, silencing minorities. No, no, he said drowning out the loud minority. Drown out the loud minority? Sure. Okay, my bad. Just save that one in the memory bank for later. Silencing minorities. Drowning out the loud minority. Okay, dude. When optics is the crux of the argument, this, to me, is in some ways indistinguishable from just being an anti SJW person yourself because it means that your online content Overton window always has to include the Gamergator perspective. And how much leftism can you really be getting done if that's the case? All of this makes a lot more sense when we look at where Xanderhal is getting this whole narrative from. In his video he starts off by citing another youtuber whose video's thesis forms the basis of his own and the channel he cites just so happens to be an actual reactionary youtuber whose primary content focus is dunking on e-girls and uh defending leafy Bruh. oh my god so uh what's going on there this all reminds me who's this tom dot hey look at my content me of last year when he wouldn't stop saying ableist slurs despite his community's objections to him doing so his reasoning was that gamer language such as this is more effective at bringing people over from the right it only took about 12 debates and seven response videos for him to eventually stop hyperbole strike seven he did so the thing is is like <laughs> i never liked that argument right i never liked the argument that like um oh is that turkey tom so first of all, I never liked this argument that, oh, we need to say slurs because we need to bring right wingers over. Right. I don't think that's like a valid point. You know, listen, I get a bit spicy sometimes. I say some naughty words. OK. Chud is a slur. I mean, it's like a political slur. I mean, come on, let's not be silly now. But I don't think, I don't like this argument of, oh, we have to say slurs to bring people over to our side. I don't think that's necessary. I think saying slurs is like, we should avoid it, right? And if you let the tiger out of the cage. If you let the tiger out of the cage, it is what it is. But, you know, you should probably be like, hey, I shouldn't have done that. But I don't like this idea of, yeah, I never like that argument. I don't think that's, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think you need, you know, I don't think you have to call Ben Shapiro, like, whatever, <laughs> to point out that, oh, yeah, this guy's wrong. I don't know. It was always a bit of a weak argument to me. Say it if you want to, but say it with your chest and own it, okay? That's my perspective. Stop, and that's good, but not without it requiring severe pushback from multiple different creators. Xanderhal does go on to say that optics aren't everything, and that it's okay to be trans or something. Trans people with, with pink hair. But I'm more so talking about the attitude, not like the, the, the optics of who's advocating for what, right? That doesn't matter. I don't believe in the idea that, like, 
we should relegate certain identities to the to the sidelines because their identities are like uh, bad optics. I don't believe in that. Okay, optics are important, but they're not everything, right? But that was only after the Gamergate tirade spilling out of him. Condescending, Woke, scoldy, trans people high and mighty. Care. So it's stuff like this that makes me wonder about the boundaries of what these communities are able to accomplish and whether or not the high regard. I do feel I do feel like he's leaning into. I mean, he gets to the Vosh stuff soon. But I do feel like he's just using Xander as a bit of a punching bag. Eight lords seem to hold themselves in is warranted, but you can decide that for yourself. See the current state of the valiant white debate lord saviors of the American online left. Stop it. He'll probably complain about being clipped out of context, but I mean, the full video's there. It's it's a full video. You, you can watch the whole thing. Also, if you do go there, don't say anything mean, please. Just comment Squid Gang with six Gs. But that's all I really needed to say about that guy. So yeah, on to the important stuff now. Title card right now. Thanks. Yeah, I think the Gamergate thing happened and is a specific cultural phenomenon or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I do like, you know, I don't agree with like Xander Hall on his perspective with the Gamergate and the return of this. To, to, like, I think he's got some points that are worth making in terms of like, um, you know, some of his ideas around like what it boils down to to me is it's just kind of saying like, you know, hey, let's not be like super weird with people. Let's approach people where they are and meet them where they are and not scold people and talk down to people. Let's remember the moral luck aspect of our beliefs, et cetera, et cetera, right? That stuff I think is good. But yeah, the game again, return to game against stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Is this it? True. Are you kidding me? No way. People never believe women. Are you serious? Do you really think that- Nobody believed women. You know, there was a whole thing in Tulsa when they believed a white woman. Get fucked! <laughs> what? Tulsa? What? In Tulsa. Get fucking wrecked, bitch! I don't know what you're referring <laughs> There was a famous incident where- That is so good. The fact that you can't hear the game music either. So it's just- <laughs> You could- Listen, you could play that without the video. Look, look listen to this one kidding? more time. No way. People never believe women. Are you serious? Do you really think that- Nobody believed women. You know, there was a whole thing in Tulsa when they believed a white woman. Get fucked! What? <laughs> you Tulsa? don't even know! What? There's no Tulsa. game sound. fucking sounds. wrecked, bitch! There's no fucking game sound. There's no game sound. You can't hear it. <laughs> anyway, here we go. We're moving on from Xander Hall. We're getting into the Vosh memes. Let's go. So now we've dealt with that sort of silly stuff, uh, I want to move on to a more serious example of where I feel that these spaces are causing harm within the- Now I want to move on from the silly stuff. Like, Noah's just using Xanderhal as an easy target punching bag for sure. There's like no doubt about it. God, I- oh man. I do feel- I feel- I feel like whilst- I think it's like legitimate for Noah to respond to Xander Hall because he's talked shit about him. I think his response is like excessive. And he's just used him as a punching bag. You know, and now he's going, oh, now we're done with that silly stuff. Let's get to the real deal, Vosh. I don't know. The online left. I think it actually makes the most sense to start this story by briefly going back to Xander Hall reacting to something that I tweeted. I know I'm making you watch me watch someone react to my tweets. It's disgraceful, but I promise I'm going somewhere with this. And then this is the one. This is the one that didn't instantly, they, if anyone says- Didn't they make fr didn't they make good good over this? Didn't they make friends over this? Vosh is wrong in the Professor Flowers debate. There's just no saving them, okay? There's no saving them. They're a piece of shit, okay? Because they're defending genocide. There's just that that is the, the dichotomy in that debate. You're either anti genocide or pro woke genocide. You're you're either pro genocide or anti genocide. And certain people on the left are pro genocide because it looks woke in a certain way. Okay, so if you have no idea what any of that meant, let me get you up to speed. The tweet he is referencing is talking about a conflict from a couple oh, of months God. ago that happened We're between the this, large left leaning streamer Vosh and the small leftist video essayist Professor Flowers. My tweet is saying that Vosh was in the wrong in that conflict. This interaction began when Professor Flowers made a video critiquing Vosh for conflating black nationalism with white nationalism in a prior debate. Vosh reacted to this video on his stream. He disagreed with her characterizations of him. Professor Flowers made a video responding to his disagreements. He reacted to that video on his stream and disagreed. He then invited her on the stream to discuss, which ended up turning into a debate. After this, she released one final video on it, and so did he. That's not where this ends, but for now, that summary should suffice. The debate was, well, a shit show, as both parties have since acknowledged, and as we'll get into in a moment. But the effects that it had on the online left content space were much more serious and malicious. One of these effects, as Xander Hall has so succinctly put it in his video, is that it's treated as orthodox thought in debate spaces that anyone who agrees with or defends Professor Flowers in any capacity is pro-genocide or sympathetic to violent ethnostates. That is the dichotomy in that debate. You're either anti-genocide 
or pro-woke genocide. Now, this idea comes from somewhere. It comes straight from the source, actually, from the overlord of the debate realm himself, Vosh. Since this debate nearly six months ago, Vosh has continued to characterize Professor Flowers as being an anti-white racist, whose ideology inevitably leads to genocide. Here he is talking about it last week on his stream. It's like Professor Flowers. I think that Professor Flowers is basically just an anti-white racist who stumbled into a misunderstanding of decolonial uh, terminology. I, I, yeah, I, I've got a much... I've got a... <laughs> I don't sort of say much more. Like I've got criticisms of Professor Flowers. Um, I think though that I've probably got a slightly more charitable reading than some other people out there. Um, I think I think that like her rhetoric on some stuff is just crazy. Like you know, <laughs> like the thing is, you can you can recognize you can recognize that like a state in order to have sovereignty part of that sovereignty because sovereignty means you can do whatever you like right <laughs> like obviously that's what sovereignty means in order to be a sovereign nation you need to be able to go to war right you need to be able to declare war on another nation which is pretty fucking fucked up so that would include genocide but then you would say like but that doesn't mean genocide's fine it just means that in order to be sovereign you would need that right but then obviously we don't want that to happen. So yeah, I would be against it on principle or something like that. I don't know. There's another way that you could put it, right? But like, I don't know. Like it was a whole shit show. And I think Professor Flowers is just very bad at like stating her points. And I think that she and others suffer from this issue um, where basically there's like this fear almost of like saying that something like... It's almost like you don't want to say the wrong thing because it looks like you're not supporting in marginalized people or something. Do you know what I mean? And I think that, yeah. Because this is the thing, right? Like, obviously, there's been stuff I'll we'll probably disagree on with Vosh, but, like, I would be concerned about debating Vosh. Um... Because I think that the way he goes about debate sometimes can make the debatee look really bad. And obviously he's got like a big audience behind him. Um, like a friend of mine debated him on free speech. And like you just watch the chat and it's, I think his chat are just fucking, you know, brutalizing this person because they're obviously very supportive of Vosh. And uh, my friend has got a pretty decent position on it all, but it ended up talking about TOS and stuff. It was a bit tedious, but yeah. Bosch wants to get that win. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think Bosch is always obviously looking to get the dub. Um, but yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not a fan of Professor Flowers. I mean, Professor Flowers blocked me recently on Twitter for some reason or another. We used to be moots. I'm not scared of the Voshites. Like, listen, I, you know, but the point is, is like, I'm not saying I would never debate him on something. But you've just got to go into it and you've got to bear that in mind and you've got to be cautious in how you say certain things. This don't take way to frame VGG. What do you mean? It's true. Like, it's true. It's the same with Destiny's community. It's the same with Vosh's community. There's a bunch of people in this community that will agree with the streamer no matter what. Do you disagree with that sentiment? Do you disagree with that? Do you not think there's a group of people that no matter what will agree with the streamer whose community they're in? Like, is that, is that a controversial thing to say? <laughs> Now, there are some people that aren't like that. There are some people who are more willing to criticize, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know what you mean. Right. Well, then shut the fuck up, you little idiot. Exactly. You should agree with me as my community. <laughs> it does. Exactly, Trax. I know. It Listen, I know it applies to me as well. Tell us what tell you what to think. I don't want to tell you what to think. <laughs> now you're just memeing on me. But no, the point is, is yeah, there are gonna and the thing is, is you see that most in chat. Um and there will be some dissenting voices. There will be some people that are like, oh, I don't know, maybe but yeah. But the thing is, is like I don't know. I think Vosh in the past has had some takes on like black nationalism. You know, there's been this conflation of black separatism and black nationalism when they aren't the same thing. Um, I don't know. There's been, there's been a whole story about Vosh on that stuff. Um, yeah. 
Anybody that disagrees with Lona Box? Lona Box is based. I like Lona Box a lot. <sighs> yeah, well, I think that's is this is the thing is Vosh corrected himself on on that stuff because you know, God, there's some deep lore here. But he spoke to I think it was Andre Demise. He goes by Brother Q now, I believe. Who, funnily enough, has got some beef with beef with Haas over the Canadian truckers. Jesus Christ, I need to go out more. I need to go out more. This is crazy. All this deep cut lore. Give me some subs and donos and bits, okay? Give me some subs, bits and donos. Come on. Help ease my terminally onlineness. No, I think he did, um, well, sometimes with Vosh, look, <laughs> see, like, I'll criticize anyone. I don't give a shit, okay? Sometimes what I notice with Vosh is, like, he'll he'll move on a position, but he won't, like, make it explicit, and he just kind of moves without really recognizing that his position has changed. I don't know. Please go get a pint with my big dog. Hey, Tizzy, Maybe thanks for the bits. your favorite lady for a night out on the town. I'll give that a think, thank you. And Kim with 100 bits, thank you. But yeah, I don't know. I just I just think that, like... Vosh, from my experience watching his debates, can be very forthright in his perspective. But it's, you know, I, I think you could apply this criticism to other people too. Like, who in the debate is going to back down and be like, oh, no, I'm wrong, actually. That's quite rare. And there's this perception that you'd look weak doing so. Hey, thanks for the bits. Female eunuchs. Touch grass, kick some ass, and go on a nice date with a brie-ish lass. What's surprising about left-wing content creator fans all agreeing with their content creator senpai of choice is that they are banding the proud left-wing tradition of constant infighting. True. But anyway, yeah, I think that um, that whole debate was a mess. I think Professor Flowers does it doesn't do a good job of arguing her position and um at the very least makes it sound like she's got some really yikes takes. My internet drama thought, I watched Adam Something's latest vid this morning while pretending to work and it made me really sad, though it was a fucking banger video and I recommend it to anyone. But I'm happy to be here to wipe clean the sadness from my countless brain ridges with pointless Based. internet drama rather than Earl War drama. Based. Thank you very much for the bits. But the thing is, is like, listen. Because even me saying, hey, like I've got maybe a more charitable take or charitable view. Like somehow that makes, you know, I can tell. I know. I know that there's people in the chat that are like, oh, oh no. Like grow the fuck up, okay? Even if I came out and said Professor Flowers was right, actually, that would make no difference to anything, okay? And I don't even think that. So please, chill the fuck out. No need for the soy facing, okay? You can be a bit more charitable to someone without throwing your total awe in and being like, this person is right. Anyway, I don't have any fucking impetus to agree with Professor Flowers. She probably blocked me for being racist on Twitter or something. I don't fucking know. But I just, I just think that, um, you know... She fell into a few rhetorical traps, but I do, I do find like her, the way that she talks about like white people colonizers is a little bit fucking weird champ. Okay. I'm not on board with that at all. And I think that sort of like language is just, it's just pointless. And people have got this habit of like, oh, well, oh, what you're white and you're offended. I'm going to say the things that are going to upset and offend you most. And if you don't like that, that's white fragility. And it's like, listen, if you want to recognize that people have got a certain fragility when talking about race, there's probably some validity to that, okay? There's probably some validity to that, right? But why would you want to, like, trigger that by saying the most insulting or triggering or annoying thing you can think of? Like, it's literally just mental, I hate that term. It's so stupid. Yeah, I don't like it at all. But, I'm, you know, I think that like, I think there's a valid like concept in there somewhere that like it can be uncomfortable to talk about race and stuff like that. 
fragility is generally a reason to be more sensitive to someone. Well, yeah, exactly. And I think that you can get the point across. Like, I think if you took, listen, if you take like a, 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 a random person, random white fella, you could explain to them some of the issues that are at play and they'd probably be at least somewhat interested in hearing what you've got to say. But if you hit them with that lib shit academic nonsense, they're going to be like, oh, no, thank you. You know, especially if you call them like, like, where is this going to be valid that you would go out and you would call someone like a colonizer or something like to me, someone who's ingratiated in this stuff. I, I personally don't really care if you call me that. Right. But like if you if you're going to go out there and like try and change minds, I just I just don't know who you're winning over by using that sort of terminology. It just doesn't make any sense to me, you know. What is this? It's not a stun lock. Listen, not every time I'm talking to chat is a stun lock. Do you know how streams work? Sometimes I just want to talk to my stream and talk to my chat about some ideas. Of, is that okay? Am I reacting too much now? Do I need to react less? But yeah, I just, I just think that, um, you know, I think that people just need to... Be, what is your goal? Like, if your goal is just to gesture... Listen, if your goal is just to gesture to people that kind of somewhat agree with you or you think are more inclined to agree with you because of, like, the colour of their skin or whatever, that's fine. You go right ahead. But it's just kind of useless in the broader context. Anyway. Ology. There are always bad people who will mask their ideology through sort of euphemism and adjacent positions. How many super far-right fasci types cloak their positions in the front of, like, nationalism? Not, like, hyper-nationalist, fascist, whatever, you know, but just, like, regular American nationalism. That's, like, the most common thing in the book, you know? It's not even, like, anything PF said was that extreme either. It's ethnic cleansing. I don't get it. There's enough lore and content regarding this interaction to last anyone who's interested until next winter, so I'm just gonna give my honest opinion and summarize it in the following way. I do not think that anyone that has actually listened to Professor Flower's videos on this topic can make any of the claims that Vosh and his fans continue to make about her, calling her an anti-white racist that is pro-genocide or pro-ethnostates, is a lie, as it was never the content of her arguments. It was a narrative crafted by the failings of the format of online debate streaming. More on that later. We'll come back to this later. But more importantly, thanks to the memes... I do think it's worth highlighting that um, Professor Flowers like went in quite in a, quite an antagonistic way with Vosh, which is, you know, understandable to a point, but like... I just, I just think that it's a bit disingenuous to act like Vosh is the only person in all of this that like <laughs> is the antagonistic one or the or the one that has led to all like <sighs> yeah like uh, I don't know just seems a bit weird like it just seems a bit like yeah, sure, people have... Like, I think people are way too fucking in the deep end going off on Professor Flowers sometimes, but, like, fucking hell, like, <laughs> rein it in a bit if you don't want to be seen in, in, like, a bad light, surely. What was the prop that she had? ...by which this narrative was conceived, with Vosh arguing against decolonization and separatism using fear of retribution rhetoric. It's all well and good to talk about living free of your oppressors, but when you break apartheid in South Africa, there are millions of white people living in that country. Like, what do you do? Do you just, like, ship them all out? Do you build camps? I mean, there's not really any way to do that without genocide, you know? It has created a hostile space for black creators wanting to discuss issues like black separatism and black nationalism, and this, in turn, serves to reinforce the racial status quo of left tube, which is something that, especially as leftists, we should not be wanting to reinforce. In his retrospective video on the conflict, Vosh still fails hey, to meaningfully Fully recognize the distinction between black hey was going to donate this to the black separatist movement but though you could do more good with it fuck professor flowers thank you very much for the five dollars i disavow the rudeness though but thank you for the five bucks i appreciate it one of the white supremacists were talking to him Yeah, I think I think the the thing is is like plate of brownies and offering to Vosh for brownie points. I mean, yeah, that's a bit cringe. Go in and think you're going to epically own like that, but apparently it's just the debate bros that are cringe. I don't know. The thing is, is like, am I a debate bro? I guess I somewhat am, but not in the same way as some of these other people. I don't know. I don't really have like a. Do I have a dog in the race? I guess I'm a streamer, so I guess kind of. I do do d d Discord or ban. And I'll talk to people about my ideas. I'm not anti that.
But yeah, I'm not like, I'm a React bro. But I don't know, maybe. I do, I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit of everything, bro. Lazy panel host. Yeah, I'll take that one. That's true. <laughs> Black separatism and white nationalism, which was the main criticism of Professor Flower's original video. Black separatism is essentially just the black version of white nationalism. It's just kind of couched in this, like, a different type of victim rhetoric. The end result tends to lead to ethno, uh, sorry, uh, ethnic supremacy and ethno states, and I think that's bad no matter what. Mind you, this is after, like, half a year of this being explained to him in varying degrees of simplicity, that this comparison between these two different things serves to ignore the historical context of these movements and comparing it to nazism is um ignorant to put it lightly gary anything you want to say here or can i just keep going um okay well i guess on the debate side we did find professor flowers guilty of a few crimes okay first off racial essentialization what the fuck is that it's when you call white people colonizers it's racist dog whistling oh jesus fucking christ this should be disqualifying from the entire way i mean <laughs> Ye yes, like there is, essen essentializing someone on the basis of their race is bad, like, and if someone does that, it doesn't matter what, what angle you're coming from. That's, uh, that's bad. I mean, we shouldn't do it, right? Especially if you're like looking at it from a left-wing lens. When we're appreciating that people are the outcome of circumstance. I don't know, it just seems, well, we'll see what he says again. Higher but. left. The idea that literally just admitting by colonizer, I'm using it as a dog whistle for white. Okay, give me the timestamp where she said it was okay to call white people colonizers. What? Um, you don't have it, do you? Not on hand. Okay, well, no one does because it doesn't exist. But she said white people are colonizers. How is this not an endorsement of- Who colonized the world, Gary? Europeans. Okay, and what did Europeans look like? Like you. So, white, right? Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's okay to call white people colonizers. That's racist, hurts our movement, and pushes away potential new leftists. Gary, I already explained this. That's not what Professor Flowers was saying. Her point was that colonization is an ongoing process, and choosing to ignore this fact makes it impossible for us to truly reconcile with its legacy. Anyone with a baseline understanding of these issues that saw the debate understood that this was the perspective she was coming from, and that Vosh trying to frame this as somehow being racist against white I people feel like was, to use an among us term, Sus. Why is the, the context of oppression irrelevant? Why is the context of who has power irrelevant? Because, and this is, and I'll say it once more, and this is why you should really check your racism, my friend. White people and colonizers aren't the same group. The people who are white in South Africa are regular humans who live their lives. They are not physical. Colonization Wait, is still they are happening. Not like, physical. America they are, yes, is the still concept of I feel like this is having your cake and eating it too. Oh, I'm not saying it, but I'm saying that colonization is an ongoing process. Therefore, white people are colonizers. Like... I mean, listen, good luck, good luck getting all the people that agree with you on board with that, I guess. Um, totally useless rhetorical flair that doesn't really do anything. Um, like, I don't know. It just seems silly. It just seems like a complete waste of time. Chat triggered. Like, <laughs> right, it's funny, right? Like, I always thought the trigger in the libs thing was kind of, kind of lame. But, like, people seem to act like, oh, yeah, saying something that, you know, is kind of just stupid. And then someone getting a bit annoyed about it. It's like, oh, you're triggered, are you? Like, what the fuck? It's okay to be racist and want an ethnostate if you're black. Also, only Europeans did colonization. 15th century Muslims in India and Pakistan and the Japanese colonizing Korea and northern China are in fact very white. Yeah, well, hang on a sec. What did Noah just say? Did Noah just say about like, wait, did he just say it was like Europeans? He was suggesting it was Europeans. I, did I miss that? Is he saying that it's Europeans that did colonization? Fucking hell. That's a bit fucking reductive, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, just because we were the best at it doesn't mean we're the only ones that did it, okay? <laughs> Colonization is happening. You do not then get to attack six million ethnic minorities in a country. That's what you're doing. You're taking a sociological problem and making it a race problem, which is, by the way, what conservatives do to black people. <laughs> In this debate, Bosch employed the argument of the fear of retribution because, as members of the gamer zone tend to do, he was testing the limits of her moral framework using an extreme hypothetical, which is a very normal thing to do. It's one of the most normal things you can do, actually. So you're saying that hypotheticals have no value. What, are you too stupid to understand how they work? The ability to imagine made-up scenarios and argue about them is what distinguishes sentient life from animals. Shut animal up, dude. No, I don't have a problem with hypotheticals as a concept. I do, however, have a problem with people being framed as endorsing the extreme outcomes of these hypotheticals. It's not even like anything PF 
Jeff said was that extreme either. It's ethnic cleansing. When they never would have argued for them in the first place had they not been brought to the table by Vosh or whichever debate lord they are encountering. In multiple conversations since, Vosh has attributed this escalation in rhetoric to Professor Flowers. Escalations like equating land back to genocide. Here he is talking with indigenous activist Morgan Khashoggi about land back. Morgan and Vosh are referencing Professor Flowers in this clip. It feels like a very virtue signaling thing sometimes to be very mm -hmm. in yeah. favor of decolonization. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, pro land back. But then when it actually comes to talking about these issues and actually like mm -hmm. reconciling, like sometimes it can get, I think, a little bit, um, well, there's, there's a, cl a clear dissonance. So it's not that people are getting it so wrong. It's just we need to smooth some wrinkles so out. The thing is, so like one thing I think is like, He's, he's, it's quite a, on his part, it's clever. I don't think it's good. I think it's bad, but it's a clever rhetorical trick on his part, having this good faith Gary person. And it's clever for two reasons. So one is he can just say stuff and hey, good faith Gary isn't complaining. So this must be good faith, right? And then secondly, good faith Gary might say something and he can make good faith Gary look ridiculous and he can just dismiss him. And it's like, well, clearly good for it. Like, it's a very clever rhetorical trick that he's got. And it's an example of how you can how you can slip in um, bad ideas into a video essay that, the, you know, are just as bad as like the, the missteps you would make in a live debate. Um, but you can put that in a video essay. And unless you're really thinking about it critically or looking at it you're not you're not going to pick up on it and you're just going to kind of um like subconsciously accept that premise do you know what i mean and it's almost like it's almost like you know you want to act like you oh well listen i've got this good faith person like you know so i'm having my ideas challenged or something but really it's just another rhetorical trick with which to to push the idea that your ideas are in fact correct but you are getting some scrutiny from good faith gary <laughs> so yeah it's quite it's quite a clever little rhetorical trick that's been slipped in there so that people don't start using really inflammatory language to describe how we feel about our own problems. The weird part is that Professor Flowers never spoke on these issues on the terms of genocide until she spoke with Vosh, which should be of no surprise to anyone familiar with debate bros. Over the course of all these interactions, the first time the word genocide is ever used is here at four minutes and 45 seconds into their debate, and it's not mentioned by Professor Flowers. When you take a look at a lot of black separatist communities, there are a lot of underlying reactionary tendencies like homophobia, anti-Semitism. It seems like the fundamental bones are pretty similar, and then when you get into the logistics of creating an ethnostate, there's not really any way to do that without genocide, you know? Like, take South Africa, right? I mean, it's all well and good to talk about living free of your oppressors, but when you break apartheid in South Africa, there are millions of white people living in that country. Like, what do you do? Do you just, like, ship them all out? Do you build camps? I mean, it seems like this logic always leads down a really bad road. Isolate that last quote. It seems like this logic always leads down a really bad road. That conception right there, that limit-testing ideology, is precisely what causes the inflammatory language to start being used in these conversations. The same language that the actual land-backed activists Contrapoints are different characters argue different points and it was good because they were not strawman and she took their points seriously, not like this. Yeah. I mean, this is just coming across as like a, um, I don't know what, what he says at the end of what his conclusion is yet. Um, but yeah, it kind of just comes across as like, more debate, bro, bad stuff. And I've seen people sharing it. Obviously, it's not on, not on Noah, but it's like, oh, just stop watching debate content. So, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to watch all of this. I feel like, um, you know, I'll link the video and you can watch more of it, I guess. But... I feel like we're maybe we'll get to the end of this segment. We'll skip ahead a bit. See what else there is. Go from there. Said was causing so many problems. Using really inflammatory language to describe how we feel about our own problems. There's not really any way to do that without genocide, you know. Discussing ideas in this manner by pulling them to the extremes in a combative context is especially damaging with topics like black separatism, a topic that the white online left has repeatedly demonstrating having very little knowledge about, and thanks to Vosh and others, very little willingness to inquire further. Vosh just says they're Nazis in reverse, and everyone's like, okay, cool. Black separatism is essentially just. The Watch black a bit of that, version yeah. of white nationalism. All of this has been explained ad nauseum in these videos, but the YouTuber Carr, he has a great channel, by the way, go check him out. He explains why this is ignorant as oh, clearly Carr. as I've seen anyone do in this clip from Professor Flower's last video. Let's see if people will get it this time. 147th time's the charm. I'd like to set the record straight on black separatism because a lot of people seem to get it wrong in online spaces. The best way, I think, to visualize it for anyone listening. Separatism is basically self-determination and creating as much space away from your oppressors as possible, allowing you to act upon that self-determination. If that creating space for oppressors requires violence, then it requires violence. It doesn't have to, though. You can talk about Rosewood, Tulsa. You can 
talk about MOVE in Philadelphia. MOVE was a black separatist movement, and the cops bombed it, and they killed eight children, and they burnt down a block of townhomes. So this organization did not was not responsible for anyone being hurt in their town whatsoever. They literally just wanted to do what they saw, mind you, pe white people doing throughout the country, building compounds and building their own internal insular support networks and dual power structures. That's ultimately what separatism is about, is creating that space between the oppressors and the oppressed or plundered people so that they can act upon that self-determination. It's never been about ethnic cleansing. It's been about creating a safe distance. It's ethnic cleansing. I don't get it. We saw the same problem with hypotheticals arise in Vosh's recent- Wait, weirdly didn't include Car and Vosh talking and Car walking back most of what was said during that stream. Really? I mean, like, look, I want to be generous to people's positions and people's points. But, like, obviously, when you're talking about setting up a space away from oppressors, like, you know, I... <laughs> As good faith as you can try and be, it sets up alarm bells. Like, it's like, what, what, what do you mean specifically? Like, what, what, what is the, you know, what is the, how would, what would that look like, right? Like, what is that going to look like in reality? How would that play out? Oh, hey, President Sunday, how's it going? You know, and and is is the aunt is you know, but the, I guess the problem I've got as well is like, you know, I feel like I feel like um, you know, I feel like people like it's okay to question that. Don't surely, watch debate, bro, streams. Instead, watch my badly researched propaganda videos that crumble under any scrutiny. Please donate to my Patreon. I promise to put out one edited video a quarter. Together we can achieve socialism and pay for neat lifestyle. Thank you very much for the bits, Dizzy. It's like, I feel like, you know, if you want to propose something like that, it's okay to, like, question and interrogate that, surely. Like, I don't know, people act like, oh, you cannot possibly question this. I'm a black person stating this, therefore, you know, it is legit and you must believe what I say. Like, and if you question me, like, you are somehow doing a bad thing. Now, yes, people can be egregious with it. And I don't like this idea of, like, you know... Just comparing it to Nazis automatically, that seems like very lazy uh, thinking. I, I don't, you know, I don't like this comparing to the Holocaust, comparing to Nazis, ethnostate, stuff like that. It just gets a bit reductive. But I think it's worth just, in, you know, as long as we can inquire and be critical, that's fine. But it seems like some people just don't want that at all. And they just want their ideas to be accepted, you know, without without any sort of um, query. <laughs> seems a bit weird to me. Like, yeah, maybe you don't want to debate it in the live sphere, but if your ideas are, you know, valid, like, they should be able to stand up to scrutiny, some form of scrutiny, surely. I don't know. Debate with YouTuber non-compete, where he opposed this hypothetical regarding Jews being overrepresented in banking during the Weimar Republic. Whenever people have been enslaved, if they rise up and use violence to liberate themselves, then that is probably acceptable because they had material conditions in which they... Like so the Nazis? Rising up against the Nazis was acceptable, yes. No, no, no. The... After World War One, the Nazis claimed that Jewish bankers were holding the country down. And that was false consciousness because that wasn't actually happening. How can you that tell? That was false consciousness. Their, their ideology was not aligned with reality. How, how can you tell? Because Jews don't actually control banks in the world. There was a disproportionate number of Jewish control of banks in Germany during the Weimar Republic. All right, Vosh, we're done here. Thank you. Goodbye. This is, uh, that's all I need to hear. You don't have an ethical... Oh my god. I'd run too if I was him. In case anyone's curious about what was happening there, that guy was actually too stupid to have a conversation with. Oh Jesus Christ, why did I ever watch this stuff? In response to non-competes claim that no, the Jews did not control the banks. Jews don't actually control banks in the world. Vosh responds with, actually, yes they did. There was a disproportionate number of Jewish control of banks here we in go. Germany during the Weimar Republic. All right, Vosh, we're done here. He doubles down on this claim in a follow-up video days later by arguing... Okay. Doing that this is a statistically accurate reading of history. The critical thing here is that for me saying that there was a, a disproportionate amount of Jewish control of the banks in the Weimar Republic, a bunch of people online are calling me a Nazi. Like everywhere, it's like a whole meme thing. And the weird thing is, as I understood when going into the debate and then have such looked into and have found that yes, this is the case, there was. The reason non-compete hung up here wasn't because his ethical system had been exposed or whatever these guys are always talking about. You don't have an ethical- oh my god. But because- yeah. Listen, Noah doesn't understand that the point is, the danger of non-compete's position Okay, <laughs> the danger of non-compete's position is that if he is saying, well, the Nazis were wrong about the Jews, so therefore the Nazis were wrong to do what they did. What if the Nazis were right about the Jews? What does that mean? Because you have just said the reason that the Nazis were bad is they were wrong about the Jews. So what is implicit there is what if they were right? 
That's the whole point of it. It's never... Jesus Christ. How do these people... Yeah, it's the Zizek clip. Exactly. Even engaging with this claim that Jews controlled the banks at any level of historical specificity cedes the entire argument to the fascists. Whether they did or not should be irrelevant. The real question is, why would this matter? I'm dropping a quick tactical Zizek nuke here because it's relevant regarding the topic of debates with racists and fascists. Why is this false? Because the Nazis here, even if it were to be true, but it wasn't, of course. Wait! Zizek is making Vosh's point! Wait, what? Zizek is making Vosh's point in this. Is that it doesn't matter. The anti-Semitism doesn't matter. They were wrong for being anti-Semitic. Um, not because not because of like the fact that there were maybe some Jews controlling the bank. Oh my god, this is unreal. When you literally don't understand the point. They lie in the guise of truth. Because the true question is not, is it true what they are claiming about the Jews? The true question is why, in order to sustain their, their politics, they need this fantasy of the Jews. Why they need this fantasmatic figure of the Jew? And yes. incidentally, it's the same, I think, even today with Iraq. Here I got, here I think that many fake leftists. If you, th this is, this is the point that Zizek is making. <laughs> it's the point that Vosh, look, look, did Vosh make it in the best way? No. Like, Vosh could have done it in a better way, sure. Like, and when he's, you know, he was obviously memeing a bit and stuff. Um, but Zizek is, is essentially making the same point, but better. Absolutely fell into the trap of accepting the terms of the debate. The true question is not, is it true what, what they claim about Saddam? The true question is a totally different one, is what kind of new logic of hegemony, new world order is established in this way and so on and so on. Even to accept these terms and then to argue, you put yourself into a totally idiotic position, you know, when there you have to argue, oh, but it's not so bad, some people nonetheless supported Saddam. That's not our debate. My God. No, I don't think Vosh is an anti-Semite, but I wouldn't be terribly upset at anyone who got this impression after seeing Vosh uncritically repeat this false Nazi talking point and then double down on it. Or if they'd encountered the legions of Vosh fans spending hours online after the debate arguing that yes, actually the Jews did control the banks before the Holocaust because- the, the, problem you've, the problem you've got, right, is regardless of what the, the truth of it is, right, the whole point is that the Nazis, um, you know, used the idea that Jews controlled the banks to suggest there was some innate characteristic in a Jewish person um, that, that made them bad, somehow inherently bad, right? Whereas whether it's true or not, if there was, I don't know, I've not looked into it, if there was some truth in the idea that there was over-representation of, of Jewish people in the banks, that doesn't justify the anti-Semitism, right? Because there's nothing innate in a Jewish person there's nothing innate in a Jewish person that would lead to a proclivity to be uh, to, to run a bank or whatever, right? Like the idea of the Jewish question, right? There's nothing that exists in a Jewish person that's innate that would lead to that. So there's probably some sort of historical context you could look at to explain it in a different way, right? So the point there is that when non-compete says they were they were wrong because they were wrong, well, no, they were wrong because they were attributing. Um, traits to Jewish people that w they essentialized them, and they expl and they pointed to examples in society that highlighted that essentialization. That is fundamentally what was wrong with the Nazis, right? And there's different ways that you can look at it and stuff like that. But the problem is, if you're saying the Nazis were wrong because they were wrong about how many Jews were in the banks, you were implicitly, whether you realize it or not, you were implicitly on some level agreeing with a fundamental concept that the, what the Nazis are saying. You might not even realize it, okay? And that's why it's important. And that's why it's important to differentiate that out and to say, look, the Jews could have been 100% in charge. A better way to do it is to rather... In fact, I think a better way to do it, because, you know, I think Vosh was kind of memeing on it a bit and stuff like that. The better way to do it would be to say, you know, it doesn't matter if Jewish people were 100% represented in the banks because there's nothing about being Jewish that leads to that outcome. There would be some sort of societal thing we could look at and we could look at the history and so on, right? The problem is not that the Nazis were wrong about that. The point is that the Nazis would point to that as an issue in the first place because it points to their essentializing of Jewish people as some sort of negative thing, the anti-Semitism, etc. Yeah? So, yeah. That, that is the reason that that was a, 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 you know, a fundamental part of the debate. But, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not relevant. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. My favorite streamer said so. It's these sorts of nonsense, magic, fairy tale, wonderland hypotheticals that have no use outside of the performative debate context that end up leaving a lasting impression on the internet. These little Vosh freaks flocked to non-compete to call him technically pro-
I mean, the thing is, is yeah, this this is a very, you know, highly like, um, what's the right word? It's not the most charitable way of engaging in non-competes point. But first of all, like that is an implicit suggestion of what non-compete is saying. Like non-compete clearly hasn't, you know, thought it through. Or wasn't, you know, like the idea that the Nazis were bad because they were wrong about the Jews is crazy. Um, but also on top of that, like, I'm sorry, what about what non-compete did? Like non-compete ended the call and then was go going on, had a cope stream about it. Like, why is it that this guy, like, look, I sort of just did it, but I'll really crystallize it. Vosh, Vosh was being provocative in the statements that he made in that debate, which meant that he said something which can easily be misviewed or misattributed. And he could have made his argument in a much more strong, much more optically good way or something like that, right? Fine. So I'm happy to like say what Vosh did that was wrong or something like that. But by the same token, like where's your criticism of non-compete? Where's your criticism of Assam for some of the shit he's done? It's just crazy to me that this guy seemingly like is not willing to critique like the other side, so to speak, right? And he just he just is really heavy hitting. Like he's not willing to criticize Professor Flowers. It's just so one-sided. Do you know what I mean? It's just so fucking one-sided, and I just I hate it. It's annoying. And that's what a lot of these people struggle with, is they feel like they can't criticise the other side for clout reasons, maybe, or because they don't want to be seen as not, you know, like, uh, they'll be seen in a certain light, a certain negative light. I don't know. But, yeah. Pro Nazi. When their streamer was the one spreading Nazi misinformation. Part of my issue with debate streams is that misinformation like this is so easy to spread, yet so difficult to correct. It's why this video has to be two fing hours long and take weeks of work to make. They stream for eight hours a day and say shit like this, completely ignoring the real world complexities of these issues and reducing them to fun little rhetorical games to be used for dunking on other YouTubers. That guy was actually too stupid to have a conversation with. Then all their fans start <laughs> spreading this shit around the internet uncritically and wonder why people call them Nazis. A bunch of people online are calling me a Nazi. There was a disproportionate number of Jewish control of banks in Germany during the Weimar Republic. This is really weird to me. I've seen an accusation thrown around the internet that Vosh is a Pedialyte drinker because of a number of older clips from his stream where he brings up things like chimichangas and Pedialyte, not unlike the examples we just looked at. Now, Gary, I need you, man. Hey, hey, hey. So straight up, these clips are weird as fuck. So fucking weird. Weird and wrong as arguments. I'm not going to play them because I am hanging on to a single shred of hope that this video will still be able to get monetized. It probably won't though. But, uh, Gary? Well, despite Noah's objections to these clips and their apparent sussiness, there isn't anything in them that would merit the claim that Bosch is a Pedialyte drinker. That is a very serious accusation to be making, and to make it without solid proof is dangerous, and we should not normalize doing that. Thanks, man. Okay. So at some point in time, Bosch stopped using these extreme examples involving children in hypotheticals, probably because using them only encouraged people to make these spurious, but not out of nowhere, accusations against him. So if he understands that handling these sensitive topics carelessly can have negative consequences and has adjusted his behavior accordingly in the past when they've affected him, why can't he do the same for others? As we've seen, the effects are real. Professor Flowers is the target of a harassment campaign spurred on by Bosch with his use of this hypothetical about the fear of retribution. Non-Compete was accused of technically defending Nazism because Vosh, through his little rhetorical game, justified this treatment in their eyes. He is either choosing to- Wait! The knock and paste done that about Vosh! And also, you've just said how wrong it is to take these clips out of context of the pedo shit, and he's changed. Luna Oi, right, as part of the drama you're talking about, was basically calling Vosh a pedo on Twitter, in as many words. Like, <laughs> this is so fucking out of order. Like, listen, I don't think- Like- <laughs> You're not going to, like, say, hey, I just want to recognise. Like, all it would take is saying, I just want to recognise I'm being critical of Vosh for this, this, and this. I do think that there's behaviour that the other side engaged in, that this which is what I would be critical of. But there just seems to be none of that. There just seems to be none of that. It's literally just, like, criticising Vosh for all this stuff, which is fine. Listen, there's some there's some validity in the critique, of sure. Like, I think there's some elements of, of stuff he's saying throughout the video, which I would kind of, like, somewhat agree with. I think um, some of his comments about entertainment, is it entertainment? Is it more than that? Is good? And there's other things. But the fact he's going so hard on Vosh for these points, but, like, kind of not willing to engage with, like, well, hey, what about what the other side was up to? <laughs> like, it's not it's not to say that it excuses Vosh's actions that you think are bad, but it maybe at least contextualizes it a little bit. Um, because yeah, like one of the reasons that Vosh went so heavy on that conversation, not that it justifies some of the things he said in terms of like, he could have done it better. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think that, um, it's a little bit disingenuous to be so heavy on Vosh with this and then not at all address the argue, you know, the, the fact that, um, 
The other side was doing shitty stuff too. I don't know. Who ignore these facts or just doesn't care? And both of these should be unacceptable, right? There's a great thread from a streamer called Ask Vera that runs through the standard procedure oh of God. interactions with debate streamers and how they are a recurring problem. Number four is especially relevant here. Reactionary debaters smuggle assumptions into hypotheticals, hoping you get distracted with the hypothetical rather than challenge the assumption. This is precisely what happened to Professor Flowers regarding the topic of genocide, and this distraction has forced her onto her back foot ever since. Here she is talking about it in her final video on the topic. So there are a lot of people who are saying that I'm genocidal, and I just want to clear up what I mean. What I mean to say is that there is no amount of violence that colonized people can enact towards their colonizers that will ever compare to what colonizers have done to them. That compares to the millions of kidnapped and enslaved people, to the thousands of years of history and way of life that has been wiped out, to the languages that have been lost, to the entire caste system that has been created, to the relocation and murder of millions, to the subjugation of entire nations, and to the subjugation and profit of stolen land. She is right. Do I need to explain that further? Hopefully not, because I'm not gonna. It's not my job to educate you. But I want you to watch how Vosh reacts to this clip on his stream. There is no amount of violence that colonized people can enact towards their colonizers that will ever compare to what colonizers have done to them. That compares- What does that mean? What is- First of all, that's not what she meant, because that's a totally different concept. Is that even, like, relevant? What does that have to do with what we're talking about? History and way of life that has been wiped out, to languages that have been lost, to the- Also, doesn't this kind of support my argument? This seems very strange to me, because it feels like the implicit suggestion is that the violence that colonized people do is okay, because it could never- it could never be enough. This, what does Professor Flowers say after that? Because, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it seems, um... I don't, I don't think that's a particularly good point. <laughs> well, you know, it would never be as bad as what the whites did did the other way around. <laughs> God, it's fucking weird, isn't it? You know what I mean? So Professor Flowers says these things cannot be compared and attempting to do so downplays this very real history of oppression. Again, an objectively true statement. And to this, Vosh responds... Hey, that's a super charitable reading of what she's saying. Jesus Christ. I love how these people have got super charitability to the people they like. And then when it's on, they disagree. It's like, we must fucking destroy them. We're good faith, Gary. Fuck you. <laughs> Jesus. That is the best faith thing I've ever seen in my life. You claim to not want to do white genocide, yet you cite historical oppression, which could be used to justify white genocide. Huh. Curious. Very curious indeed. Checkmate. Nazi. So... This is racist, right? Am I allowed to say that yet? I think what you mean to say is that while this individual act may not be racist, the way this flow of information has been set up has led to a racist outcome. That outcome being Professor Flowers discussing historical oppressions here is seen as a potential justification for retributive violence, which was never her point and not how these claims should be viewed, especially from- That's the same for you. Listen, I said earlier, <laughs> I said earlier that like, I think Professor Flowers is, um, you know, like got, got treated a bit harshly and I've got a more charitable, uh, you know, approach to what she says, despite the fact I've got no incentive to, because, um, you know, she, like, blocked me on Twitter and stuff like that. Like, we used to be mutuals and stuff, but I'm still going to be somewhat charitable. And you're like, oh, you're just the same. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> okay, buddy, if that's what you think. Um, You know, I have, in the course of this, criticised Vosh. Um, I've somewhat defended Professor Flowers, um, despite having, like, literally no incentive to. Uh, Yeah. You have a hate boner for Hassan. Why, why are you bringing up Hassan? I've not mentioned Hassan for fucking ages. <laughs> um, and in fact, yeah, I have like def somewhat defended. Like recently, I defended Hassan because there was a clip going around of him acting like he was dunking on um, uh, 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 Julian Assange. And I looked at the full context and I said, um, yeah, like this is an unfair clip of Hassan. Clearly, he doesn't, you know, hate Julian Assange or, or you know, is, is 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 thinks badly of the situation. He clearly states. Uh, I can't remember what it was. But anyway, it's just like a short clip, so it didn't become a YouTube video. But like, yeah, I'm not... Like, I criticise Hassan when I think it's relevant. I probably, you know, am a bit harsh on him. Um, but yeah, that probably comes from a place of, like, getting frustrated that everyone is so defensive of him. Yeah. But yeah, I, uh, you know, definitely have got biases. But I think it's just a bit rich that this person is going so hard on, um, you know, debate bro streamers for things, but isn't willing in the video itself to criticize when there's definitely criticism to be had. Um, and then seemingly doesn't have anything to say about like Asan saying some really like shit when he's going heavy on Xanderhal for something which is at least somewhat similar. Yeah. To be on the left. 
Yeah, so it's racist. Okay. Thanks to their debate, which in effect served to legitimize this fear of retribution rhetoric, a white supremacist narrative is being repeated all over the place, making it so that topics requiring nuanced discussion like black separatism and black nationalism are framed as being not only inherently violent, but equivalent to Nazism. If we take a quick peek at some of the chats from that stream, it's quite interesting. Mom said it's time for me to be the colonizer. It's a pro-genocide argument, basically saying that the image of white people in chains while MLK smiles in the sky is based. That is her saying that a white genocide is justified. So that means reverse genocide, good. Leftism, it's good. Leftism, we love it. Thousands of years of history and way of life that has been wiped out. To the languages that have been lost, to the entire caste system that has been created. Our resident critical race theory scholar, Xander Hall, elaborates here. I'm gonna say this right now. I'm gonna call it out. When people say woke genocide to refer to like the, the black separatist stuff, it's kind of racist. I'm gonna be honest here because it's not woke. All you're doing is putting woke before something that has to do with brown people because it has to do with brown people. It's not woke. There's nothing about what Professor Flowers or, or Black Hammer or any of these people advocate for that is woke. Being woke is advocating for integration and cooperation, okay? A multicultural, multi-ethnic, multiracial movement to fight against the systems of oppression in this country that put certain groups of people down, right? That is woke. Segregation, even if it's, well, we, we're black people and we want segregation. That is not woke. Just because brown people are doing it doesn't make it woke. Oh, that's just great stuff. We love it. Leftism is when reverse racism is the scariest thing you can think of. Mom, can you pick me up, please? They're not being colorblind. There's a good clip from the YouTuber Bad Empanada that explains how ridiculous it is to try to make this comparison. So I love the fact that they always reference Bad Empanada, who's like just an absolutely unhinged lunatic who like posts like weird shit on Twitter, like his docs people. <laughs> like the guy's a fucking lunatic and they always go to him like, yeah, here's a base streamer to talk about this. Okay, okay, buddy. It's in a different world where white people did all the same thing and the black people were more radical and they were like, you know, we, we want you guys to get the fuck out of here. You know, we're, we're not just going to forgive you for centuries and centuries of oppression for enforcing apartheid upon us for a hundred years. We want you gone. Would that be the same thing as Nazism? No, not even fucking close, man. Truly unbelievable. And w do I think that would be an ideal solution? Also, no. Is that what I would want? Also, no. Can I understand it? Absolutely, yes. Did you really just cite Bad Empanada in your video? Looks like you've lost me. That guy is a bad person. Everybody knows that. Me citing a clip of Bad Empanada saying something that's objectively true is not an endorsement of everything that he's done on the internet. Please stop being a fucking baby. Just look at the meme okay Look oh my god it's so fucking funny right <laughs> i feel like i've been called out but i haven't really like it's it's like <laughs> i don't know like okay you've got this bad person and they make some good points sometimes but like the stuff they do it's not like they just got some um you know bad perspectives like they've genuinely done some really fucking fucked up shit Do you know what I mean? It's not like they just got some bad takes sometimes. Like he's he's do he doxed someone recently. He doxed there was it Bastia. He like shared like articles and photos of him and all sorts of weird shit. Yeah, he, he um I, I mean doxed. I'm probably using in I don't know how what the nature of it is in terms of like what he shared. I think it was like his real name. Um, I think he dug up some articles about them. Yeah. Basti had to talk with his employer about it, really. He tried to talk Kraut as well. I don't know. I just think that there's probably other streamers you can use that aren't total fucking lunatics <laughs> whose entire online presence seems to just be acting like a complete fucking weirdo. He talks about Italians having like fascist phrenology or like fascist like tendencies or something. I don't know. It's very strange. I find this whole like, oh, it's okay to be like racist to Italians. Very fucking weird, champ. Do you know what I mean? It's like, Why why would you like act like that's a cool thing to do? It's just weird. <laughs> but yeah. Look at the meme. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's really helpful for me actually. I'm slowly swinging around your baby's crib so you can gently fall asleep. Okay. What is the meme anyway? What does it say on this? Nah, please stop being a fucking baby. Just look at the meme, okay? Look at the meme. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's really helpful for me actually. I'm slowly swinging Bad Empanada's YouTube videos. I don't th like. I don't think that all of Bad Empanada's videos are gold, are like gold necessarily. Either the rest of Bad Empanada's in the, on the other on the other hand, painful, agonizing failure. I mean, that's one way of putting it. That's for sure.
Jesus. Anyway, swing it around your baby's crib so you can gently fall asleep. Okay, thank you. Now, from my perspective, Bosch seems to be defensive about these ideas because he is operating on some underlying assumptions about who Professor Flowers is, assumptions that were created when they had their debate. There's an extremely relevant video that I'd like to plug here, Debate Me, How to Know Things on YouTube from Scottish neoliberalism understander, John the Duncan. Please go watch this, especially if you I've watch Bosch. Been. Sorry, John, just have to send them your way, Gangin but uh, the debate bro deprogramming. The boom bots kill em with a shovel in a farm in Somerset County, I... O -H -H. Thanks very much for the bits. Industrial complex has to start somewhere, and your two videos will be our foundational texts. But this one addresses many core issues of online debate culture. I actually watched this video, and um, you know, I kind of, I kind of like, I, I agreed with some of the points that were made. But then he, but then John was just like saying things like, "Oh, these people are bad for doing this, aren't they? These people are bad for doing the debate stuff, like." These these so called Marxists that like uh, I think he calls himself a Marxist, but they kind of um, it, it feels it feels like they aren't kind of willing to kind of get on board with this idea, which you know I think is quite important. Is this analysis of how incentive structures and um, you know whatever in society influences outcomes? It's kind of like acting like the the actors themselves are somehow you know bad for engaging in behavior which is incentivized it doesn't really make any sense to me and all of these videos tend to just end with stop watching debate content which again is a five head take because if you like a piece of content like why would you stop watching it but yeah one of them being how knowledge is created in these spaces and how this knowledge gathered through the act of debate is often held supreme above all other forms and how this is maybe not the best thing for the left i think the issue with this proliferation of debate is that it further embedded the idea that debate is a legitimate way of finding out whether something is correct and true. This is another example of YouTube's structures influencing how knowledge is produced. The platform encourages certain types of content which then yes, impacts how true. both viewers and other content creators this is true. view knowledge creation. And this might not be an issue if debate related at all to any sort of truth. And the problem is it doesn't. So Vosh's defensiveness or inability to sort of stop being a silly guy is a byproduct of this overvaluing of what debate actually is. From Vosh's perspective, Professor Flowers is who she showed herself to be in that debate. And this, above all other things, is the information upon which we should base all of our subsequent attitudes and treatment towards her. Well, to be fair, Noah, he is a debate streamer. That's his medium. That is how he gathers his information, by talking to people. How else is he supposed to know what they're all about? Um, that's kind of the issue, Gary. The hypothetical answer to this question is that he can actually watch their videos. He can listen to what they're saying when they've put a lot of effort into researching and presenting their arguments. But this form of listening is antithetical to his content format. In order to retain his position as standing rhetorical genius supreme, no, uh, bad faith, bad faith. Okay. In order to keep his stream moving and entertaining, he often skips around looking for arguments that he can try to respond to in these videos or pauses before the points have been fully argued. He actually did the former with FD signifiers break bread, which is disappointing because there was a lot of particularly relevant information in that video. The scary reality is that the very homogenous nature of their fan bases. Where's my face? are fresh out of radical hate filled movements <laughs> and for now they're yeah i don't no nah, no nah, i don't yeah i'm not again like this is too general the idea that anyone who does debates are like oh it's just sophistry and like they're not as smart as the video essayists and they're just like you know they just do rhetoric but they don't really have any real play. like this like yeah no i don't know he acknowledges later in that clip that he isn't giving the video a fair shot and says to go watch it which is good i'm jumping in on this bit at the end interpreting every statement as though it applies to me and responding defensively to it so this is not like a fair representation of the video as a whole i'd encourage you all to look at the whole video yourselves but still this format presents a clear dilemma to our ability to exchange information. This is documented in Professor Flower's videos, where she shows the way Vosh doesn't ever actually engage with her arguments in an honest manner. Now, for the rest of the stream, Vosh skips over the segment where I talk about nationalism in the context of colonized people and enslaved people versus white nationalism. He also skips the part where I talk about black separatism, black supremacy, and even racism. It's an important part to skip, and unfortunately, Vosh doesn't realize that this addresses many of his accusations. Again, those are all linked below. More homework to get through before the next time I post, which at this rate will probably be in like July. So you got plenty of time. Don't procrastinate. Make sure you turning your FAFSA as well. Don't want to miss out on that big old bag of cash. So if we are choosing to ignore all of that and just rely on debate streams for our information, you can probably see the problem this creates, right? No matter how many times Professor Flowers says that genocide is not and was never something that- Well, what I'm interested in, like, you know, I've got some disagreements with um, some of the points that Noah's made here. Um, and I do think he's like, you know, looking for a bit of that Assan clout from what I can ascertain, which is a bit cringe, but I don't know. Like people have been saying like this guy is- um, 
as always, it feels like people are going real heavy into the criticisms of him. Um, I do think there's a few salient points brought up. Do you think he ever talked to you on stream? Um, I don't know. Apparently after Vosh, he's done talking to people. I mean, you know, if people like this want to talk to me, I'll talk to them. But I'm not like, um, like super like, oh my God, I must speak to this person or something like that. I don't really care. I don't really care that much about it. Oh, I just wanted to talk about the drama and respond to this video, which we're doing. She nor any land back or decolonization activists were talking about. In Vosh and his audience's mind, she will always be the person in this clip. What do you think of the six million white people who live in that country? Do you think the black people, who are by far the majority, have a right to remove the white population? I think that they would have a right to do that, but I think that would be really harsh, and I think that, that they're not even going to do that. Out of curiosity, do you know how many Jews died in the Holocaust? It's so funny to watch oh these gotcha God. moments happen when he gets I people caught cringe. in these little traps. You can see the excitement on his face. It's like when the shark from Nemo first smells blood. I think that they would have a right to do that, but I think that would be really harsh, and I think that, that they're not even going to do that. Let's go. Do you know how many Jews died in the Holocaust? So to them, she will always be... There is, there is, yeah, I think that, um, like, uh, that's something the Vosh does, right? I mean, it's this, it's this kind of, like, keenness to get a Duncan or something like that. And I, again, you know, this is, this is, it's kind of similar to when he said that thing to non-compete. But yeah, a bit cringe be the person that stumbled over the oh so simple question of genocide you're gonna say but really you're gonna say the b word after i just said the g word oh so you want to kill white people then okay i can't believe this this is so messed up i'm literally being murdered right now the problem with these exchanges lacking any sort of nuance was explained perfectly here by the indigenous activist morgan khashoggi in her conversation with vosh in this clip she is referencing one of the follow-up conversations turned debates that professor flowers had with another streamer one of the ways that i saw that was when dr heemdout had said well no i'm an immigrant and i believe that everybody has a right to live with where they live, which is a, an idea that I agree with. So he says, well, why can't I just live where I live? And uh, Professor Flowers says, well, because you're living on stolen land and that land is, is still stolen. And that's also true. Both of these opinions are valid opinions to have, but neither of them fully encapsulate the nuance of what it is to be an indigenous person repping the land back movement. Okay, fantastic. Great point, Morgan. Pitting two perspectives against one another in order to find a victor is probably bad. If we want to learn anything about these multifaceted issues, I wonder why people are doing that. You do not then get to attack six million ethnic minorities in a country. That's what you're doing. Me, when someone tells me that my entire online presence creates an irredeemable intellectual vacuum. Okay, fantastic. Hassan had some relevant words on the shortcomings of knowledge acquired. Oh my god. <laughs> Back to Hassan. What? <laughs> Like, come on, this is why, why, are we, like, look, <laughs> why are we going, why are we referencing Hassan? What, what, what is it about Hassan that makes him so referenceable? Do you know what I mean? It's kind of, it's cringe. It does come across as just clout baiting. through debate my main goal isn't to thrive on being the big brained intellectual titan because when you do that that just means they are still responding simply to power you're not actually creating or crafting an argument or showing people a different worldview you're just simply the big bad uh, gladiator the intellectual gladiator and as long as you continue being that guy they will fucking give you money and give you praise because they think you're the smartest guy in the room listen, that's the only way they can understand who is smart. listen Hassan hasn't got time to debate anymore okay he ain't got time to do all that stuff responding to power all this shit he's down the porsche dealership Buying himself a 200k Porsche. He's too busy. <laughs> He's too busy down the Porsche dealership. We don't have time for any of this debate, bro, nonsense, all right? Art or not. I apologize for most of this video being me playing clips of other people making my points for me, but I'm um, not gonna lie, I'm not that smart. Noah Samson's a fucking idiot. I'm good at making YouTube videos and talking about other YouTubers, but that's about it. Please don't copyright claim me. You're being paid in exposure. You're welcome, Hassan. <laughs> This is what people mean when they talk about how debate streams are all about winning and domination. Wait, did he just reference it as a joke? Baby, this guy's such a meme. Oh my that's god. That's about it. Please don't copyright claim me. You're being paid in exposure. You're welcome, Hassan. I love how it's a little throwaway gag when it's like, you know, more evidence that Hassan is just like some sort of, uh, you know. <laughs> Thank you.
Politics has been debate bro nonsense for 3,000 plus years. The Patreon link. I don't know. It's kind of cringe. But this is what people mean when they talk about how debate streams are all about winning and domination. Vosh beat Professor Flowers in this debate. He won. He proved Ugh. to the cheering Coliseum crowd that she is the bad, dumb lady and he is the good, smart guy. That's how it will exist in his mind and the minds of his audience of hundreds of thousands of people until, well, forever, it seems like. Far smarter people than me have tried to explain why this shit is ridiculous and reinforces white supremacy online, but none have prevailed. The debate zone might just be an impenetrable bubble of stupidity. Hey. Okay, that one was a bit harsh. Thank you. The debate Ugh. zone is definitely not an impenetrable bubble of stupidity. Is that sarcasm? Nope. All right, carry on. I've seen that Vosh is capable of having fruitful conversations with other leftists in the past. One great example is his talk with YouTuber and anarchist history PhD haver Zoe Baker in late 2020, despite their ideological- By the way, after this, I think um, I'll link if you want to watch the rest of the video. Um, I might skip to the conclusion and then you can watch, um, you know, I don't want to don't want to misrepresent like what I've seen. So like, I don't want to like cut halfway through, but I just want to move on and listen to it, the conversation differences they shared both of their perspectives on political strategy in a non-combative manner and were able to move forward with a better understanding of each other's views but when it comes to talking with other leftists about issues he lacks perspective on it mostly goes like this what an asshole or like this are you listening to a yeah. word that i'm saying or this that guy was actually too stupid to have a conversation with or this i'm starting to wonder if you're educated enough to have this conversation in before you say i'm clip chimping cope and seethe liberals no, I'm just kidding. I, I don't say shit like that in real life. <sighs> All of those full conversations are linked below. Go watch them and see if you can identify where and why they went wrong. Hint, 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 hint. Here is a clip of Vosh talking about how he views these types of conversations that I think is very telling. I'm gonna put it this way, okay? I've talked yeah, to a valid. decent that's number valid. of lefty that's video essayists who disagree with me, and not one of them has come out looking good. You guys understand that, right? Like the, the time I do we... think I do think Vosh gets into like dunk mode a bit and uh, just starts kind of dunking his stuff. And yeah, I don't know. I just think that's a bit cringe. We all do it. I'm guilty of it sometimes. I think sometimes just, you know, try not to dunk too much is good, but yeah. We talked with, with the video essayists when they come to disagree, like this this is not like uh like I'm 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 blinded by their intellect when they come over here. This is very like a very aesthetic obsession, the idea that like, oh video essayists <sighs> are smart because they have scripts. Once again, he is implicitly reinforcing the idea that the gamers marketplace of ideas is some supreme form of knowledge creation, and anyone who can't hang with his rhetoric must be too stupid to have a conversation with. He follows that up by saying this. Well, you know what? What I do isn't easy. I don't have a script, and I never think about anything that I do. It's all just off the cuff, okay? I don't have any brain at all. This is just reflex. I'm not even thinking about what I say. Okay, so he's joking here, and I really do appreciate Vosh's sense of humor. But where's the lie, though? Like, I'm not saying he has no brain. I'm saying it would be awesome if he took this I'm just a dumb streamer, no thoughts, head empty approach and actually operated as if he understood that. So, in a word, humility. But it's so strange how he can acknowledge this here in a joke. I don't have any brain at all. While simultaneously citing his rhetoric as being the peak of online intellectualism. Not one of them has come out looking good. Being open to where your gaps in knowledge are makes things better for everyone involved in interactions. But most of the time, he does the exact opposite of that. That, and it can be hard to watch. I'm starting to wonder if you're educated enough to have this conversation. And so, because of all of this, Professor Flowers now exists as a character in the debate bro canon. The crazy black separatist lady that hates white people and loves genocide, and any and all subsequent harassment and content made at her expense is therefore totally justified under the pretense that, well, we saw her true colors in that debate, so she deserves it. Bad, 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 very- Okay, listen, I'm gonna- listen. It does strike me a bit of the meme. You know, this person is a bad person. Um, therefore, it justifies anything. Like, regardless of what your perspective is on Professor Flower's perspectives, um, you know, I do think this is why I say I think people have gone too heavy with it, and and the, and the response she's gotten has been excessive. I am Ho. Um, you know, there's no way she deserves the the sort of vitriol she's gotten um, for what she said. Yeah. Very bad, anyway. very bad, bad. Anyway, listen, if you want to watch these next segments, I'm going to watch the conclusion um, just to see what the conclusion of it is. But by all means, um, you know, go and watch the rest of the original video. But from what I understand, um, Noah Samson makes, uh, makes good videos. So even if you don't like this one, maybe give another one a chance. There we go. Um, but yeah, you know, and I think that whilst it's easy to kind of point to one side, um, I feel, you know, and I, I can't really remember like the exact nature of what happened with um, Professor Flower stuff, but I know definitely with the non-compete thing, which I think this goes into, which we're going to skip because I don't have all day to watch this. 
unfortunately. Um, but yeah. Hey, female. Noah Check looks bit. like Freddie Mercury with purple bisexual lighting. Um, but yeah, I think that um, yeah, I can't remember what I was gonna say now. Oh no, I was gonna say like with non compete, like non compete definitely did some stuff. I don't know, maybe he talks about it, so maybe I'm being a bit unfair. But the fact he hasn't really criticised the other side in any aspect of the content that he's done, like I just I fail to see like. I think it's quite rare that, like, it's only one side that is engaged in bad behavior. Like, in cases like this, when you look into it, often there is a little bit of bad behavior from the other side as well. It's not just a one-sided thing. But the way that he's painted it seems very one-sided. And I just think that's that's wrong. I think you can you can critique the side you're kind of defending, you know? So, yeah, I don't know. Sideism is BS. What do you mean by sideism is BS? Stop. I haven't talked about this publicly anywhere, but one of the things that started all of this was when I posted my left tube guide. In that video, I promoted both Professor Flowers and Bosch because I liked both of their content. And when it blew up, Bosch fans ended up reaching her channel and her Twitter, where she had criticized them before. And I think that's partly what prompted her first response video. So I've watched all of this happen with one foot on either side of the divide, having a new influx of viewers and supporters, many of whom were Bosch fans, while simultaneously watching what they were doing and how it was hurting people. I was a small content creator, still not that confident in my ability to articulate why what was happening bothered me so much. I've attempted this script roughly once a month since September, but I was never able to find the right words or had what I felt like was the right opportunity. But then Xander Hall went and said that dumb shit. Noah Samson's a fucking idiot. And I'm glad he did, because it kicked my repression brain back into gear to be able to make this. And it's especially funny given that Xander Hall is the reason I'd found Professor Flowers in the first place, all the way back in August, through a video response she made to him, where he was, you guessed it, saying more dumb shit. I think that a leftist who used to be a reactionary and is now progressive is a more effective leftist than someone who's been a leftist their whole lives. I will die on that hill. And you know why? It's because people who used to be alt-writers, people who used to be Nazis, they heard all the arguments, all the arguments, all the beliefs that Nazis and alt-writers have. And in the end, they still realized it was all wrong. Do you think that we have it? So it feels very full circle, you know? Never change, buddy. Debate bro, lol, cow, destroy. Well, I would, I would look at it um, a bit differently. Um, I would look, I, I don't know if I agree with that framing of it, but what I do think is that I don't know if it's uh, it's more about the the intellectual humility, right? I think it's more about intellectual humility. And I think that one issue you have is people that have like say grown up in like a progressive household, they got progressive views, they've had progressive um views the whole life, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. They think they don't realize the moral luck that they have essentially benefited from to end up in the positions that they're in. You know? And it leads to people, you know, engaging in the kind of like, just stop being a Nazi five head without really truly engaging with and understanding why it is someone becomes a Nazi in the first place. They think it's some sort of moral flaw or some sort of moral failing. And I really don't think it is a moral failing. Like someone, you know, if you gave someone a dictionary to learn how to um, speak or speak a language and that dictionary only began with the letter only be, only had words beginning with the letter a in would it be a surprise if that person ended up speaking using only words that began with the letter a well no obviously not because that's how that's how they've learned language is through that one thing so it's the same with someone like being like a conservative or being like a nazi or something like that it's the the tools that they've been given through their life have ended in that situation, you know, for whatever reason. It could be a number of different reasons. Um, and yeah, I, I think I think that whilst I don't, I think Zan was saying it quite plainly. I think one downside is that sometimes people get addicted to the cruelty, and sometimes what you find is that people who have formerly like had alt right views or whatever. There's, there's a level of addiction that they've got to with the cruelty and they, they just like being cruel to people. And that and that, and that that can continue on because, you know, if you've got justified targets now, if you've got justified targets, brilliant, you can continue to be cruel without having that, you know, perspective questioned or something like that, you know. Um, so I think that there are definite downsides or issues that are potentially could arise. And there's a big problem with like this performative cruelty that people engage in, which is sometimes completely unnecessary IMHO. Um, but by the same token, yeah, I think there's some validity to the idea that someone that has had really egregious views 
and they've reflected on it and they've come out the other side and they've got this perspective of having gone through it. Yeah, I think there's some validity there, particularly when paired up with someone who just happens to have had the right views because they've had the right upbringing, they've had the right parents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, yeah. Bullies have always existed and figure out where they can exist and exact their bullying. Yeah, precisely. But yeah. It's again in the marketplace of Joe Mama. I'm joking, by the way. Please don't take any of this seriously. If you think political content creator beef is interesting in any capacity, you need to go outside. But first, True. stop watching debate streams. Stop it. Stop. Anyways, that's it, everyone. Hope you liked it. Sorry if it was a bit harsh at points, but, uh, you know, I just tried to be honest. So now that I've said all that I need to say, I can finally retire. So wait, is that a meme? Stop watching debate streams? Is that... Because I don't know. I always find that a five-head take when uttered seriously. Air from Debate Bros Discourse. For real this time. You have no idea how happy that makes me. I'm free. Free at last. I am willing to come onto any streams to discuss specific disagreements with claims that I made in this video. But make okay. a list with timestamps and have it ready or I will leave the call. Other than that, leave me alone forever. Thanks. Uh, but, 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 but one, one more, one more thing. Damn. There's currently about 100,000 people in Hawaii whose water supply has been poisoned with jet fuel by the U.S. Navy and their Red Hill fuel storage facility. On oh, November damn. 28th, Sunday, it definitely smelled like I was in a gas station pumping my gas in my car. That's how Jesus. I knew something That's was bad. wrong. Not only is the Navy refusing to do anything about this, but they are actively sweeping the problem under the rug by lying about further water contamination and just a few days ago filing a counter lawsuit to keep the reserves open after the state of Hawaii ordered Jesus. them to shut down. This has been years in the making, but people first started getting sick in December just three months ago, and now no mainstream sources are covering it. Please click the first link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a webpage with instructions on writing a letter to the Department of Defense. They've made it pretty straightforward in their templates and talking points. Talk about this with the people around you, share that link, and follow Oahu Water Protectors on Twitter to stay up to date with everything going on. It's a mass poisoning of indigenous people and land by an imperialist military power. And we don't like that on this channel. All right. Thank you so much to my patrons as always. I'll try Damn, that's pretty crazy. I had no idea about that. Look at <laughs> our European visitors reporting to us. I can't access it because of um, EU data laws, I guess. It could be. Anyway, listen, I'd really recommend um, going back through and watching the bits that I missed. Obviously, I didn't react to all of it or watch all of it. Um... But yeah, go and check out the full video. I feel like we spent a lot of time on this. But I do think it would be remiss for me to not at all talk about or cover the conversation. So I'll maybe just watch. Apparently he walks back a lot of the claims in the first like 10 minutes or so. Is that right? You do. I'm not wait. here to convince you or your audience that like... Wait, uh, Noah, Noah. If you're just... Noah, yeah. you are currently the one with nothing in your hands arguing against evidence that hundreds of thousands of people have seen in which she unambiguously as directly as you can said the thing you won't accept the only thing that i can assume this is is you understand that if you fall on this point you fall on the next one